Ok, hola Sebastián. Hola. Hola Alberto, ¿cómo estás? Bien, gracias. So we are on time. When you wish, we can start. One minute. Okay, one minute. The speaker is there, no, Emmanuel? Yes. Hello. Yes, I'm there. I'm there. Can you okay. hear me? Uh, yeah, perfectly. Yes. Great. Okay, so I, uh, uh, I will, I will introduce you. I will present you. Cuando me diga Sebastián. Adelante, profesor. We can start now. Ok. So. Ok. Good, good afternoon to all. I am very happy to be here. I will be the chairman of this afternoon or evening session of this great conference in honor of Enrique. So very welcome all of you. I will take uh, this uh, opportunity, just uh, some moments to say congratulations to Enrique for his inspiring scientific career that uh, has been very important to, to this community in particular, in particular for young people in Latin America. So I wish you an excellent continuation of, of your career, Enrique. So uh, we are on time, so we will pass to our next, our first speaker of this session. Okay, so uh, just a few words. Uh, Emmanuel Trela, he is a professor at Sorbonne University in Paris and is the director of Laboratoire Jacques Rillions. Uh, during the last decade, he has developed an amount of research together, together with Enrique. He has co authored more than 20 articles and proceedings with Enrique Sebasua. Uh, uh, we will talk about. Uh, Exponential convergence towards consensus for non symmetric linear first order systems in finite and finite dimensions. So, Emmanuel, are you ready? I'm ready. Can you, can you see okay. my slide? Yes, we see your slide now and okay. your, yeah, the pointer. So, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Happy birthday, uh, Enrique. We, we, we indeed have. Quite, quite many articles together. But uh, today, so I will, I will not present um, uh, an article uh, that was done with Enrique, but rather with uh, Laurent Boudin and Francesco Salvarani. I think, by the way, that Francesco is in the, is in the room. Uh, are you there, Frances Francesco? Yes, I am. Okay. Good afternoon to everybody. Hi, hi, Francesco. So our, our work, as you can see, the, the title is a bit long, but uh, it is about consensus systems that are also very familiar to Enrique, who wrote a number of papers also on, on consensus uh, systems. But here, our main objective is to be able to treat um, in an L2 way, I will explain what I, what I mean here, non-symmetric. Uh, systems, non-symmetric consensus systems. So let me let me immediately uh, come to the mathematical model that we that we have in mind, which is you know which is this very famous model that was designed quite quite long time ago by Exelman and Kroos, which is for the moment in finite dimension this very uh, simple system. So you take capital N agent whose uh, position, say, for instance, is uh, modeled by uh, this uh, variable, state variable, yi at time capital, I at time t, which evolves according to this differential equation. So as you can see, yi dot is equal to the, to the sum over all possible agents of a coefficient sigma ij, which is an interaction coefficient, times yj minus yi. So uh, sigma ij is a kind of interaction of the agent number i with the agent number j. And the, the, the state of the agent i can also be, uh, for instance, an opinion. And indeed, in what we worked together with uh, Laurent and uh, Francesco, 
this is the opinion uh, uh, model that we have in mind. Let me recall that for this kind of system, we say that we have consensus whenever all uh, the state variables coincide. So when all, uh, for, for all i and j, you have yi equal to yj, which is equal to some y bar. Uh, so y bar is also the average uh, of all the giants, right? And uh, when you have consensus, of course, you have an equilibrium of the system and nothing moves, right? This is consensus. All people have the same opinion, say. Well, so for this kind of system that is very well known and that is paradigmatic, uh, actually, for many studies, we say that the system is symmetric whenever the coefficients sigma are symmetric. That is, sigma ij is equal to sigma j, j i for all i and j. And otherwise, we will say that the system is non-symmetric. Right. So let me, let me recall, uh, you can see here that I, I have put uh, a number of, of names that the exelman cross model is a basic model for, uh, for collective dynamics or social dynamics, but there are many, many other models, like for instance, the very celebrated model by Cocker and Smale and many, many other variants. Here, I have written uh, quite many names, but uh, uh, actually I am very far from being exhaustive because in the latter years, there, ha there have been uh, many works about, uh, about collective dynamics. And so I, can, I cannot cite uh, anybody, I'm sorry for that. Uh, let me write the exelman cross system in the matrix form. So uh, let us introduce Y, which is the, the state of the system in dimension capital N, right? Let me denote by capital A, the matrix of the system. And, and then the system above can be written in the form Y dot equal A Y, where finally, as you can see, A, is an arbitrary uh, matrix, uh, a square matrix of size capital N, whose coefficients of diagonal, the sigma ij for i different from j, are uh, coefficients that are non-negative, arbitrary coefficients that are non-negative. These are the interaction coefficients. And along the diagonal, as you can see, you, you choose the diagonal so that the sum of coefficients uh, over, over every row of the matrix is equal to zero. This is exactly what corresponds to the exelman cross system, okay? So we are interested in such systems with such classes of matrix, of uh, matrices A. Okay, another uh, a basic remark is that well, and, and let me assume in what follow that for every agent I, there exists at least another agent J, such that the agent I has an interaction, a non-trivial interaction with the agent J, okay? There is no isolated agent. This is the assumption. Then at, as a very basic remark, let us denote by E in what follows, the vector consisting of all components equal to one. Then obviously, because the sum of each, the sum of all coefficients along each row of the matrix is equal to zero, uh, you can notice that you always have A times E, which is equal to zero. That is the kernel of the matrix A contains at least the line uh, generated by E. But actually, uh, it is a very simple exercise that under this assumption of interaction and because of playing with, uh, you know, the Gershgorin circle theorem, uh, you can notice very easily that all eigenvalues of A, except of course zero, which is an eigenvalue of A, but all other eigenvalues of A have a negative real part. So what I mean is that except the kernel of A, which is of dimension one, and which is carried by the direction uh, E, which is uh, all components equal to one, except of that, the matrix A is Hurwitz. All eigenvalues have a negative real part. 
right? So this is a basic remark. Now, how do we do usually in order to prove in, a, in a two lines that in the symmetric case, we indeed have exponential to consensus, exponential convergence to consensus, whatever the initial data may be. It is very simple. It is very simple. You just observe first that if you denote, let us say, by y bar e uh, as the average, the average of uh, y of t, so this is the scalar product of y of t with e times e, okay, this is the average, then you easily observe uh, by a direct computation that this quantity is constant in time. This is just uh, because you differentiate with respect to time. And using the fact that A is symmetric, you immediately obtain that it is equal to zero because A, A E is equal to zero. So this is the first observation. The average of the agents remain, remains constant with respect to time. So then, uh, as you know, in statistics, you know, there are two uh, fundamental quantities, uh, the average, which is the first, and then the second one, which is the variance. So let us look at the variance. And if you look at the variance, uh, and if you differentiate the variance with respect to time, then you observe, because of my previous observation, that uh, the decrease of the variance is always negative. That is, the variance is decreasing. Whatever you do, the variance is decreasing. And then, of course, you obtain very easily, here we are in finite dimension, that y of t converges exponentially to its average, y bar e. We have exponential convergence to consensus. So it is completely obvious, but it is the, the, the main argument in order to, to prove convergence to consensus in the symmetric case. It is very simple. And we have a statistic uh, interpretation in terms of the variance, and that's great. However, uh, in the non-symmetric case, this very, very simple argument cannot work. It cannot work because the quantity az scalar z may be positive for some z, right? So you do not have the decrease of the variance. And because of that, Actually, in the literature, when trying to prove um, uh, the convergence to consensus for non-symmetric systems, well, the existing methods are actually more complicated. Actually, in the, in the existing literature, there is no, I will put it in quote, there is no L2 theory. What I mean here is that there is no appropriate variance um, in the non-symmetric case, that would be always decreasing to zero. So this is why, for instance, researchers like uh, uh, Jabin, Much, uh, Tadmor, in several papers, have developed what what can be called the L-infinite theory, which is which is more complicated to deal with. As I, I will come back on this point. So one of our, our objectives in this talk is precisely to try to develop a L2 theory. That is by, by designing an appropriate variance in order to prove convergence to consensus in the non-symmetric case. Okay. Our study is also valid in the infinite dimensional setting. That is when you let the number of a gens capital N tend to the infinity then the natural limit that you obtain from the previous finite dimensional system is the following, is the following equation, uh, which is now the fact that our state is a function y of t and x, uh, depending both on time and of a space variable x, which is evolving according to that equation here, uh, d, dy over dt is equal to an integral over the domain, capital omega, or D, of some kernel, sigma, okay? Sigma is the interaction kernel, times uh, y for an agent uh, x star, minus y for the agent uh, number x, okay? Uh, so, of course, defining the operator A that is written uh, here, you have exactly the same differential equation as before, except that now we are in the infinite dimensional setting. Y dot is equal to A Y. 
where A is that operator. You can notice, by, by the way, that A is a kind of uh, Fredholm operator. A can be written as K minus MS, where K is a kernel operator. It's a Hilbert-Schmidt compact operator. And MS is the operation of multiplying by the function capital S. Exactly. And um, here now in the infinite dimensional setting, the vector E whose all components are equal to one becomes the constant function equal to one over the, the, the set capital omega. We can note that we still do have A E is equal to zero. I mean, in the kernel of the operator E, you have at least the line generated by E. And also in the infinite dimensional setting, our objective is to be able to understand the asymptotic behavior of Y of T. And so to prove exponential convergence to consensus. This is our objective. In order to come to that objective, I need to recall um, a notion that is well known in the community of, uh, of Automatica, which is the strong connectivity of a graph. Uh, so let me let me briefly recall it first in finite dimension and then a, a possible extension to infinite dimension. Let me recall that in finite dimension, when you consider the matrix sigma of interactions, so the matrix sigma whose coefficients are the sigma ij, you can associate to this matrix sigma a directed graph, capital G, uh, and you, you say that this directed graph capital G has an edge from, uh, from I to J whenever the corresponding coefficient sigma I J is positive. That is when uh, the agent number I has an interaction, a non-trivial interaction with uh, the, the agent number J. Okay, so it means that when a coefficient, when an entry of the matrix EA is equal to zero. It means that there is no direct interaction between the, the agents number I and J. And when an entry of A is positive, uh, they are directly connected. And we say that the, the corresponding graph, the directed graph is strongly connected if given any two agents, I and J, different agents, there exists a path of agents joining the agent number i to the agent number j. That is, if sigma ij is positive directly, then it means that the agent i is directly connected with the agent number j. But it's not necessarily the case. The coefficient sigma ij could be equal to, could be equal to zero, meaning that there is no direct interaction. But maybe there is another path with a third agent K. And uh, you have first to go, to, to go from I to K and then from K to J in order to have a path. And there is a path of agents. There is a path of interaction connecting uh, the agent I to the agent J. So this is the notion for a graph of being strongly connected. And you, and you have here on the picture, an example where the graph is not strongly connected. Look at, for instance, uh, the agent number two, uh, which is not uh, connected uh, conversely to any other agent. In that, in that case, for instance, we have three strongly connect connected components. However, if we change a bit the matrix sigma like that, uh, we create two other interactions, then I do claim that this graph is strongly connected in the above sense. Okay, so this is a classical notion. And uh, this is a notion, by the way, to be compared in some sense to a kind of geometric control condition, but at the discrete level. It's, well, it's, it's different because there is no propagation like in a wave equation, but you can think of it as a kind of geometric control condition. Now let me generalize, and I'm not sure it is known in the, in the existing literature. Uh, let me generalize this notion to infinite dimension. 
in, in the infinite dimensional setting, we now deal with the function sigma, which is the function of interactions, a function of two variables, okay, in some, in some domain capital omega. Uh, so in order to give a sense to pointwise uh, values of sigma, we use the concept of Lebesgue points, okay, but there is no problem with that because almost all points are Lebesgue points. And now, given, given two uh, such Lebesgue points, well, uh, we will say that uh, uh, two such Lebesgue points are connected whenever you can find a path of, Lebesgue, of such Lebesgue points such that, such that as, you, as you can see, iteratively, you have this property for the next uh, point of being in the essential support of sigma seen from the latter point. Okay, this is exactly the notion that uh, generalizes the corresponding notion here in the finite dimensional setting. Okay, this is passing to the limit in some sense, uh, thanks to Lebesgue points. Right, so this is the notion uh, that we will use uh, for a graph in, in, in the infinite dimension set, in the infinite dimensional setting to be strongly connected. Now, given those definitions, and maybe the definition in the infinite dimensional setting is, uh, is, not, is not easily seen from a picture, uh, I'm sorry for that, but at least in the finite dimensional setting, it's easy to see. Uh, thanks to those definitions, we have the following result that we have proved recently with uh, Laurent Boudin and Francesco Salvarani. So we do assume that the graph associated to sigma is strongly connected. And that's uh, the only assumption. Now we can be either in finite or in infinite dimension. What we do claim is that first, there exists a unique V, which is in the kernel of uh, A star. A star is the transpose of A in finite dimension, such that all components of V are, in, if we are in infinite dimension, the function V is positive, and the scalar product of V with E is equal to one. This is a normalization condition, that's, that's all. And then you look at the weighted mean uh, of the state Y of T, which is that guy, okay? So we look at the scalar product of Y of T with V against uh, the vector E, okay? We call it Y bar V. Then we do claim that this weighted mean this is a weighted mean with weight V, is constant with respect to time. And this guy is exactly the consensus limit of any solution of the system. Actually, any solution of the system Y dot is equal to AY does converge exponentially uh, quickly to the weighted mean Y bar V. This is what claims this inequality. And moreover, uh, moreover, we can say something on the sharp uh, exponential decay rate. Well, this is not a surprise. In finite dimension, the sharp exponential decay rate is nothing else, but it is given by the second eigenvalue of the matrix A, because the first eigenvalue is equal to zero, right? So of course it is already, this result is already known in the symmetric case. You can look, for instance, at uh, the famous paper by uh, Olfati, uh, Saber and Muret in 2004, it is exactly written, but in the symmetric case. You can see also a recent paper by uh, Weber, Tyson and, uh, and uh, Much in 2019. In the infinite dimension, we also have uh, the, we also have an expression for the sharp exponential rate, which is new, which is given by a spectral bound of some operator. And this operator denoted here by A2 is uh, actually the restriction of the operator A to the image of A. Well, it, it comes from the proof. What I would like also to say with respect to this uh, main result is that um, when there is no strong connectivity assumption, 
then actually we have as well an exponential convergence result. But we have exponential convergence to some clusters. And the clusters, it's also no surprise, are exactly defined by the strongly con connected component of sigma, right? What I mean is that uh, in every region where all the gens are strongly connected together, when, when, where they do have interactions, then you have exponential convergence to a cluster. Okay, um, uh, I, ca I, can, I, I will go very quickly on the steps of the proof. So the, the, main, the main step of the proof consists of defining the weight, this weight V, which is, which is the key in this result. So let me very briefly show how to define the weight. So first we have uh, to compute the adjoint, A star. Okay, so here on this slide is the expression of A star. Okay, you can believe me. Now, for A star, actually, what we do prove is that thanks to the strong connectivity assumption, we prove that actually the kernel of A star is one dimensional. Okay, and since it is one dimensional, it means that there is a unique V in the kernel of A star such that V scalar E is equal to one, okay? And now the, the, the main point and the key point of the proof is actually to prove that this unique V in the kernel of A star is actually positive, meaning that in finite dimension, all its components are positive. This is not obvious, this is not obvious. So once you know that V is positive, you can interpret it as a weight, and this is the key. And in order to prove that it is positive, actually we have elaborated an, ono an homotopy argument consisting to deform the system to a symmetric system. For a symmetric system, a very simple computation shows that uh, the good weight is the, the function E whose all components are equal to one. And then you come back uh, along the homotopy uh, and, and uh, thanks thanks to analyticity argument actually, and thanks to strong connectivity again, you are able to prove that the positivity property is preserved along the path. This is the key point. So once you know that this V is positive, it is a weight and you can indeed define an appropriate weighted structure either in a, in a finite dimension or in infinite dimension. You can weight uh, the, the usual structure thanks to this weight V. You can define uh, here at the bottom of my slide, the concept of weighted mean, which gives you exactly the, the, the limit of the consensus. And uh, so I, I, I will pass maybe about that, but, uh, but then, uh, then you have to play, let's say with the spectral properties of the, of the of the operator a in order to establish exponential to to convergence to consensus but let me insist that in this proof the key point is to be able to identify this weight v and thus to identify a, a, an appropriate weighted structure uh, as further comments because i have to be uh, to be quicker as further comments let me uh, mention that our result can be as well settled for discrete time systems. There is absolutely no difference. So in the discrete time setting, you have as well um, the, exactly the, the, the main result. We are able to provide a kinetic interpretation of the system. Uh, I do not know if it is useful or not, but we have it. I don't know. Actually, we, we do not know if, if this kinetic interpretation may be useful or not, but we have it. Okay, so let, let me pass about that. And uh, maybe uh, more useful is again, let me come back to this weight V, because thanks to this uh, weight V, we are now, now in a position to define uh, the notion of a weighted expectation and a weighted variance. We just take the usual expectation or the usual variance 
and we put inside the weight V that we have identified. Okay? Un peu plus tard, s'il vous plaît. Je suis désolé. I'm in my office, so sorry. Um, <laughs> and um, so we can we can define in particular this concept of uh, of weighted variance. And what we do observe is that if we we can use this weighted variance along a solution of y dot equal to a y, and we do observe that if we take it as a as a kind of Lyapunov function. What we, what we have is that V dot is always negative. It's always negative. Um, uh, and thanks to that observation, um, w w our claim is that we have obtained a kind of L2 theory, but this time, which is valid in the non-symmetric case. What I claim here is that thanks to this uh, weighted variance, uh, we have found um, a Lyapunov function, which is a weighted variance, which permits to prove exponential convergence to the consensus, thanks to uh, Lassalle invariance arguments. Uh, and and uh, actually, what we do hope is that this weighted variance may be useful in some control problems, or maybe in order to prove robustness uh, of that convergence with respect to noise or with respect to some non-linearities that you can plug into the system. And an example, a first example of how this variance may be used in control problems, which is uh, currently an ongoing work with uh, Laurent Boudin and Francesco Salvarani, is, uh, <laughs> You know, it will it will become fashion again in France uh, next year. It's to control the vote opinions. Um, so we have here uh, at the top of my slide we have a model that is a model of votes actually. Uh, so so y i of t is the the opinion of the agent number i at time t. So the first term here. You, rec uh, you recognize it. It is the term that we have used throughout. It is the Exelman and Crow's term. It stands for the binary interactions between the agents. Okay? The agents communicate together. They exchange their opinions. Uh, here you have a memory term, which is a self-thinking term. And here you put the control. And the control, for instance, can be the influence of media or maybe the influence of uh, Facebook or uh, Meta. Sorry, it is not Facebook now, it is Meta. OK, so it is, in any case, it is the, it is the control. And thanks to this control, thanks, thanks to this influence, you would like that at the end of some process, all agents think in the same way. So you would like to reach a consensus. And uh, for instance, thanks to the weighted variance I showed you before, we have been able to establish a theorem showing that if, uh, so under a threshold condition, which says that self-thinking should not be so strong, which is uh, not surprising, then we are always able to control all opinions to, of, of people uh, we, we can control them uh, exponentially, asymptotically to uh, consensus, thanks to an explicit uh, feedback control. And so uh, I, I, I have to end because I, I, I run, I'm running out of time. So uh, to, to end my talk, I would like to, to wish a very, a very happy birthday to, to Enrique, who will for sure uh, recognize the, the different places that are uh, that are printed uh, here on my on my slides. Happy birthday, Enrique. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Manuel, for this very interesting talk. I don't know if there is some question or comments. Yeah, I have a question. So actually, the 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 picture on the left with Malika. So this is in the in Jean Michel's uh, birthday, I think, right? Uh, you have a so good memory, yeah. Yeah, and the and the one to the right, I think it was a workshop uh, in Gras. Was it in Gras with uh, Kunish? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then these are Janik and uh, Guillaume, right? 
Exactly. Yes. Where, yeah. where is Guillaume now? Guillaume Olive? He is still in Poland, in uh, in okay. uh, Krakowia, in Krakowia. And and the one to the right down, I don't know. I mean, this could be any place, but uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is because I cut the picture, so it is so also. This is a, a, a IHP or IHP. Yeah, it's, it looks like IHP, yeah. It yeah. looks like IHP. Yeah. Amphitheatre uh, Hermit. It is also okay. a Jean Michel birthday. Oh, I see. This was uh, Jean Michel's birthday. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, so great. Are, are these, you mentioned Lyapunov functions. Is, is there some kind of Lyapunov equation that characterizes the, uh, the stability properties you have uh, presented? Yes, yes, and this is one way of proving the exponential convergence. You are, you are, you are right. We mm -hmm. can write an explicit uh, Lyapunov equation for the weighted variance. That's perfectly correct. Yes, mm -hmm. I see. Yes, yes. The the main novelty here in the in the talk is to be able to treat non-symmetric systems by means of classical Lyapunov function. The price the price was to introduce an appropriate weight in order to deform yeah. the usual structure. Yeah, but this is why I was asking, right? Because, well, I don't know these things very well, but uh, precisely the Lyapunov equation is, is meant to, to provide you the, the scalar product in which you, you see the dissipativity of the system, right? Even when, when things are not symmetric, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And, the, and okay. So this echoes what I said here uh, at the beginning of my of my talk. In the symmetric situation, mm -hmm. for instance, you take the very usual variance, and the scalar product is the usual scalar product, Euclidean one, is exactly a pro uh, the appropriate one to prove the decrease of of the variance. While mm -hmm. as soon as A is uh, non-symmetric, well, mm -hmm. it is not the case <laughs> because uh, you know because the level sets of uh, AZ scalar Z are not exactly circles, but there are ellipses. So you have to deform the space using an appropriate right. weight. Right. So this in the if uh, so in the limit of uh, I think that is people maybe Gunter here have uh, I don't remember maybe right. So when when you make the network denser and denser, then eventually in some regime at least this could lead to what some kind of uh, transport diffusion problem or I mean. Because ah. A will be symmetric, this will be like a... You, you mean uh, the kinetic limit? Oh, am I under well, it could be, yeah, you see there are several ways, right? So one, one is uh, looking to agents, the other one is more like the finite difference one, right? Yes. I mean, I mean if you just think on, on these uh, discrete systems, you are considering as finite difference discretizations of a PDE, I see. Then, I see. then there is a regime in which this will lead to some kind of, uh, well, maybe non-local. I mean, there is people here like Mahamadi and so on that are experts on this. This will lead to some, okay, this is the kind of continuous uh, non-local model, right? Yes, I can, I can answer you in, in one word because you know very well that concept. It is exactly the graph limit of right, the, the graph limit, limit right? Yeah. Exactly yeah. what you did mm -hmm. recently with uh, Bikari and uh, Lo in one of your man. So, but then your sigma here is non-symmetric, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah, right, and see, so this is more like diffusion plus some um, drift or something like this, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. okay. exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's very interesting. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. There is another question, maybe Fatia, hello. Yes, I have, a, I have a question. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, I just have a question for the very beginning. Uh, and thank you for the very nice talk, very interesting. Does it make sense to have a, does there exist model with a more than a interaction between two agents, maybe with a subgroup of agents, meaning that, for instance, for vote models, as you ended up, you could say that people are influenced by a group of people or something like that? Yes, absolutely, uh, Fatia. We, we, we studied the simplest possible model, right? Mm -hmm. But there are plenty, plenty of variants in which, for instance, you can, you can introduce a certain number of leaders, for instance, mm -hmm. a certain mm -hmm. number of subgroups in which you have such or such specific influence. 
There are mm -hmm. okay. an infinite number of variants probably that are very interesting to study. Here we studied the very simplest case. Yeah, but it's very nice. I mean, with this non-symmetric argument and the weight, which has a sign on this is really nice. Thank you. Thank you, Fatia. Okay, thank you. There is another question, maybe Jan-Michel Coron. Uh, yes, uh, very nice talk. Thank you very much, uh, Emmanuel. I was wondering, with the Lyapunov approach, uh, so you get some exponential decay rate, is it, is it the same that you observe numerically or is it conservative? Yeah. Ah, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, it's um, the decay rate actually that we obtain with this weighted variance is not the sharp one. Okay. It's not. It's not because in order to get the sharp one, well, it's more complicated. But at least it's easy to explain in, in a finite dimension. In finite dimension, what I said is that the matrix A has zero as a simple eigenvalue. And actually, the rest, uh, the matrix can, be, can always be splitted, like I, I'm showing with my mouse here. And the, matri the remaining, remaining matrix here, A2, is your bits. So you, you immediately get the sharp, the sharp decay rate. But uh, in, in infinite uh, dimension, it's another story. It's more difficult, technically more difficult, because the spectrum of A can involve both discrete and also essential spectrum. And as usual, it's because of essential spectrum that you can lose the property that uh, the Lyapunov uh, variance, the weighted variance I showed you, does not give exactly the sharp decay rate. Okay. There is a complication exactly because of that point. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mahamadi has a warm up. Has a question. Oh, thank, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel, for the nice talk. Uh, I have uh, two small questions. The first one, uh, you didn't give the regularity of the of the weighted function is only a non-negative measurable function or you have a kind another regularity a, a precise regularity for v so uh for, for sigma you mean sorry no the v the weighted function v oh the v yeah okay um uh no v v is an l infinite function that's all it's bounded it, yes it's bounded yes yes absolutely Absolutely, it's an L-infinite function that is also bound that we show it is bounded below to, ah. and that's all. That's all we can. That's all we can have, by the way, because okay. in general, because we yeah. do not we do not make any specific assumption on the weights themselves on, on sigma, but probably well, you, sigma, there is because you, the weight you suppose that is bounded is L-infinite of omega square, and that makes difficult to apply to singular integral operator, like Enrique was saying, for well, what happens if the sigma is in L1 lock? So. Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. What we do not know, it's a very good question and that you, I, I don't have the answer. Um, if we assume that sigma is a bit regular, then can we claim that V is regular as well? I do not know. I do not know. I will, I, I will think about this question. Okay. It's important. It's important. You are right. You are right. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. I, I, had, I, I had also a, a, a question about the, yeah. about the weight. Maybe you already said that. Uh, so did you prove that B is bounded by below and above? So. At the end, it is uh, the weight is uh, equivalent to, to to the original one, the, the norm that it defin defines the, the weight. Ah, so in a, in a finite dimension, of course, you obtain equivalent norms. This for sure, but not in infinite dimension. Not in infinite dimension. You have you 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 obtain norms that are not equivalent to the to the usual ones. No, no. Indeed. Even if your weight is bounded by below and, and above, uh, let me. Ah, maybe I, I'm I'm telling a mistake. Uh, Francesco, you can you can help me if you have the answer. I'm not sure. 
So I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I don't want to make a mistake. Mm. Okay, no, interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I, I will think. Mm. Okay, so, well, th thank you, Emmanuel. And I don't know if there is another question or comment. May I? What? Well, May I want okay. a question? It's Milton from Milton. Peru. Milton Professor Emmanuel. Uh, about this model, and, and we can extend to hypergraph. Yes. Model. Yeah. Have you studied yeah. to hypergraph, or still? I, I'm sorry, I did. I didn't understand your your question. Okay. Me. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, other other question about the, the model. The model, and we can extend to hypergraph because you have studied to graph. Okay, when oh. they are strongly connected. Okay, and I would like to know about the standard, the, the, the hypergraph. I, I absolutely don't know. Uh, okay, okay, no, okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe, no, no. maybe, maybe an open problem. <laughs> maybe, yeah, yeah, it's maybe another problem with another interpretation. Yeah, yeah, that's a very fine issue. I do not know. I absolutely do not know. Okay, okay. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. If, okay, if there is not no more questions, we thank uh, Emmanuel for this very nice talk, very interesting. It was a pleasure. Mm. Okay, so, okay, so we have some Merci minutes. Emmanuel. Merci Emmanuel aussi pour uh, autant d'années d'amitié et de soutien et de collaboration. Ça a été sans doute un des meilleurs, uh, une meilleure de découverte, ça a été de te rencontrer. Le, pla le plaisir est partagé, Enrique. J'espère que ça durera encore longtemps. <laughs> so we are waiting you in uh, Steinbach uh, Brewery, right? To the, you know, for the degustation of the next uh, few beers. Yeah. Ah, when you want, with Günther. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have we have some years. Thank you, Emmanuel. We can pass to the next speaker. Are you ready? Uh, the next speaker is Fatia Labo. Are you ready, Fatia? Maybe can you can share your screen? Okay, maybe she's not ready. We are four minutes ahead of time, so we are we are okay. No, we are, technically we are in the coffee break. Oh, yeah, it's working. And then do, do you see it? Yes, we see your screen, but we see all all, all your screen. All, also the oh, oh, uh, now it's okay. Oh, now it's okay. No, now it's okay. Normally, okay. Perfect. normally it should be okay. It it is okay, it's perfect. <laughs> Okay, no, I should not do that. Okay. Yeah. Is it fine? Yeah. It, okay, yeah, it's, it's very fine. Apparently it's there ready. was some delay. I, I suspect there was some delay because there was a test and normally I knew how to do. I just uh, forgot to open the video and the, and the microphone. Yeah, but now it's okay. Uh, okay. okay, now it's 18. Are you ready? We can start. Yeah. Okay. So, so hi. We pass to the next speaker. For me, it's a pleasure to present uh, Fatia Labo. She, she was professor at the University of Bordeaux, and then she became full professor at Université Louis Pasteur, and then in Université de Lorraine. No? Uh, yeah. she, the, she will talk about some recent issues on the scalar input bilinear controls of PDs. So Fatia, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you for the, the introduction. And thanks for to the organizer for this uh, very nice conference and uh, happy birthday to Enrique, but I will come back to this at the end. Okay, so even if there is a menu, I will uh, I will uh, uh, skip some things if it's too long. I'm watching the phone. So I'm going to speak about uh, just the introduction of the subject and uh, some motivation and example, and some very well-known uh, results uh, on obstruction to exact controllability for this type of billionaire control. And then uh, the result we got uh, in collaboration with Pierre Marco Canarsa and uh, Christina Albani, our PhD student, stabilization to the ground state solution for parabolic abstract equation and some um, local and semi-global exact controllability uh, result also. And uh, another subject that uh, I developed with Christina, which is also a constructive characterization of uh, real valued potential functions which uh, appear in the in the bilinear formulation by scalar input some very short uh, perspective and open question and some thanks and happy birthday to enrique okay so uh, i i come more from the linear additive control uh, uh, question and uh, so uh, let me recall that uh, in this uh, case uh, you have an abstract uh, equation, which uh, the dynamic part, which is uh, this one with A, which uh, generates a C0 semigroup on uh, Hilbert space, in general, uh, a Hilbert space, but it can be a Banach space. And then you have the control here, which is P, and B, which is the uh, control operator. Okay. And of course, it's subjected to uh, an initial condition. And uh, the B can be bounded or uh, unbounded. And as uh, Marius said earlier, that uh, in general it means that you have a locally distributed uh, control or a boundary control, or you may have a pointwise control, but uh, in the unbounded case also. So in this model, the control appears as a linear source term. And uh, the aim uh, in if it's, it's possible to control uh, the system, it's to drive uh, the system from uh, a given state to a given desired target, which can be either a final given uh, time, uh, state, sorry, or a given uh, trajectory and at a prescribed time or asymptotically, okay? Uh, of course, the control is going to depend on the initial state and the target, you know. When you deal with a scalar input bilinear control, you start with nonlinearity because you still have your uh, dynamic uh, model. And now the control takes a form. It's a coefficient which depends only on time. It's a real value. And it acts on a B is a control, but is a control operator. But uh, you have the solution which appear also. Okay. So the abstract framework is going to be the same, at least uh, from this uh, uh, slide. And uh, the control P now is a real valued function. And it's a factor, a multiplicative factor of the control action on the state. So in the linear uh, additive control, you have, of course, using the UML formula, this expression for the solution. And you see that uh, P appear in a affin linear but affin way with respect to the unknown which are formed by the U, the solution and the control. Whereas um, in the scalar input bilinear control, of course, it becomes nonlinear action. You have a bilinear action with respect to the couple UP. So it changes things. Okay. So typical example which are well known. Uh, are and well studied uh, the Schrodinger equation, where you add a boundary and the initial condition. Here, psi models uh, the wave function of the particle. P is the amplitude of the electric field, uh, and it's a real valued function depending only on time. And the electric field is the way by which you control your, your model. Okay. 
Mu is a so-called dipolar moment of the particle. It's also real valued, and it's only uh, depending on x. Okay. So the control, as I said, is realized through the intensity of the electric field, and it's, uh, it fits into this uh, scalar input bilinear control model. You have also, uh, for instance, the Fokker-Planck equation in 1D, which uh, looks like this equation. So it looks like a heat equation here. And then you have uh, uh, this uh, B. B is an operator which at U makes uh, uh, correspond mu U derived, uh, derived with respect to X. OK, so it's unbounded. And here U is, uh, with some uh, typo, the probability density of a 1D diffusion process of the velocity of a particle under the action of drag and random forces. Okay. Here, the drift, it's a, it's a simplified model. And the drift is chosen in separate variable of the form P, which is unknown, and mu. Okay. And once again, P depends only on time, and mu is a given function. Okay. But you have uh, other physical, mechanical, or chemical models of binary control. You have heat-based models. Uh, such as uh, appear in nuclear chain reaction, modeling production of neutrons in fission. I mean, but of course it's so simple models. You have mechanical systems such as beam, you know, beams, uh, modeling smart materials. Okay. So to summarize, we have a physical system which is approximated uh, from the modeling point of view by a dynamical system evolving through time and space, and we want to act on this system, once again, to drive from one state to uh, a target one. Uh, these uh, questions are common for linear as well for bilinear control. But as uh, I tried to uh, show through these uh, few examples, is that for certain physical system, the control affects directly the state as a coefficient. And so you have a nonlinear action in a bilinear way, uh, and it changes. I mean, the fact of controlling uh, changes uh, this uh, dynamic. You switch to bilinear control. Okay. So uh, also, let me uh, point out that uh, one should distinguish scalar input bilinear control from multiplicative control. Because in multiplicative control, you have uh, the control is depending on time. It's nonlinear, but it's depending on both time and it takes value in the infinite dimensional vector control space, okay? A uh, state space, actually. Okay? Uh, in uh, scalar input, uh, as I said, it depends only on time. So in the sec second case, you have, of course, much more degrees of adjustment or of control. And uh, this explains, at least in some ways, the first pioneering uh, results which were obtained, which were negative results. And there is a... So now I will speak uh, shortly about obstruction to exact controllability for such scalar input bilinear control models. So I go back to this uh, bilinear control with scalar input P. Uh, with the framework that A generates a C0 semigroup of bounded linear operator in a Banach space of infinite dimension, and B is a linear bounded operator on this space X. So um, we get back to the set of uh, accept the set of states which are accessible from uh, any initial condition. Uh, which is, uh, I think I uh, switched the, the order and I, uh, <laughs> I forgot to, to transfer. So let me denote by uh, u of the variable t at, uh, uh, corresponding to the control p and the initial data u0 of this uh, problem. Right? One can show it's well posed in, in suitable spaces. You define the set of uh, states which is accessible from u0 uh, by this definition, S of u0 is all the trajectory that you can reach with any control in, uh, which is uh, in LR 
locally, there were infinity with values in air, and air can be uh, any uh, real above strictly from one, okay, and finite. Then there is a very well known famous result by Ball, Marsden, and Slemhod, which go back to the early 80s of the last century. Uh, assume the above uh, hypothesis on A and B, then for any initial data in the, our infinite dimensional uh, Banach space, this set of accessible, uh, uh, reachable uh, states is contained in a countable union of compact subset of X. So in particular, X minus the complementary uh, of uh, S of U0 is dense in X. So it means that your set of reachable is very, very meager. I, I, I'm not sure of my English here. Okay. And uh, in this uh, seminal paper, uh, he, he, they gave examples to beam and wave equation. And uh, in particular, in link with the non-harmonic Fourier series. Uh, later on, there were negative results, which were also proved for quantum control system by Churi Nichi in the 2000. And uh, I uh, discovered recently the Enrique, uh, a very nice uh, article by Enrique, uh, which uh, remarks on the controllability of the Schrodinger equation, not only for bilinear control, scalar input to bilinear control, but also for nonlinear control and uh, a question about uh, numerics and and uh, there is a very nice presentation on the re of the reason for obstructions, also links with the additive control question and the Hilbert uniqueness method, and also challenging question for these uh, bilinear control issues when you have a scalar input only. Okay. Since then, I, I, I'm not an expert, huh? so sorry if I forgot uh, some people. I, 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 I just uh, write uh, a very short list. Uh, there were previous work by Karim Bochard using uh, Nash Moser because they were uh, loose of derivatives you based on uh, inverse function theorem, but uh, with a, a loss of uh, derivatives. And a uh, very nice result with uh, Jean-Michel. And Jean-Michel also with negative results and also the existence of uh, minimal time. And uh, there was a result by Bochard and Laurent, and uh, Bochard uh, alone. Uh, which uh, facilitates uh, the result because there was a hidden uh, regularity property and they could simplify uh, and find the right spaces in which to set up the problem to have positive controllability results and also for nonlinear Schrodinger equation. And there are also very nice results by Bouchard and Morancet and Bouchard and Marba, more recent. Okay. <coughs> So as I said, it has been uh, widely studied by different methods, so I'm not at all going to be uh, exhaustive. But uh, for multiplicative bilinear control, so that's different issues uh, and with application to reaction diffusion equation, you have uh, works by Canarsa, Floridia, Kapalov, on the reference therein, and for result based on Lee brackets and the uh, Galerkin approximation adiabatic method, I refer to works by Boskin, Sigalotti, and, and the group. And let me go back to the subject of this talk. And uh, as I said, uh, Enrique's article, which explain uh, why and which type of property the potential, the, the mu, the, if you think to Schrodinger equation, the mu, which appear, you have the control, the bilinear control, which is the, the term p of t, which is your control, uh, time b uh, u, and b in general, not always, but is a multiplication by mu, by the function mu, which is real. Okay, and uh, it, you have to ask several property on this function mu, and to get the chance to reach larger and identifiable uh, sets for which uh, you have the uh, controllability that you can uh, reach. Okay. So um, I will not detail a lot, but uh, if you denote by lambda k phi k, 
the eigenvalues and the associated eigenfunction, norm to one, uh, for the, uh, the operator A. Okay. Uh, the link between the uniqueness uh, property, uh, when you think to uh, approximate controllability for the linear as a control problem associated to your bilinear problem, then you uh, realize that you need this type of non-vanishing condition. And it's very well explained in Enrique's uh, article. But you can find it also uh, uh, naturally by decomposing the, your solution on the, on the uh, basis, the autonomous basis formed by the eigenvectors of A. Okay. In general, if you want uh, explicit results, you need also gap conditions and asymptotic behavior. This is, uh, for instance, the case in a uh, Bouchard and Laurent paper. So this uh, gives a frame in which we work, uh, but uh, uh, we were interested on E-type equations. So our uh, abstract model refers to a parabolic equation. And for the second part of the talk, I will answer another question, which is related to uh, 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 what you uh, can hope to say about mu. Can you find practical ways to exhibit large classes of function mu that satisfy this non-vanishing condition, asymptotic uh, condition uh, for uh, the, this uh, scalar product? Okay, so let me start with uh, our first result, which is stabilization to uh, actually super local super exponential stabilization to the ground state solution for parabolic abstract equation. So our model is this one. Here we assume that X is a separable Hilbert space, B is a bounded uh, operator on X. The control evolves in N log. We will actually we will work with L2. A uh, is a densely defined linear operator, which is self-adjoint, uh, which uh, satisfies this. So you admit uh, negative eigenvalues, for instance. We assume that uh, there, um, there exists a lambda uh, strictly bigger than this, that you have some compactness property. Okay. And under this hypothesis, uh, we denote by phi k the eigenvector which form an autonomous basis. We denote by lambda k the eigenvalues. Uh, they can be negative. Uh, sorry, I forgot to correct this. They, uh, they can be negative for some of them. Uh, for this part, I will specify when we will assume that sigma is, uh, is zero. And minus a generates a semigroup, uh, C0 semigroup of uh, contraction. Okay. So using standard result, I will not develop here, but uh, there is well-posedness uh, in uh, the C space of continuous uh, function on zero T with values in X. And if uh, your, your, the solution is, uh, is uh, more regular as long as, uh, as soon as you uh, go away from, from zero. Okay, and also if uh, the initial data is zero. Okay, uh, what is called the ground state associated to our control system is just the solution of our uh, bilinear control uh, model when p is set up to zero and you take as an initial value uh, phi one. That means the first eigenvector associated to minus a. Okay. Uh, more generally. We denote by psi g the eigen solution of A defined as e, I mean the trajectory corresponding actually. Okay, again when you set p, the control is equal to zero. Uh, a short remark, trivial. If A is assumed to be coercive, that is if lambda one is strictly positive, then of course the solution of uh, our bilinear control problem trivially. Is, uh, is exponentially uh, stabilizable to the ground state. Uh, this is trivial. So, okay. So let me uh, introduce some notation and define, introduce the following definition. We say that two is locally exponentially stabilizable if we have this kind of property. And as I saw, as I showed before, 
if lambda one is strictly positive, you have to trivially this property. Okay. Now we say that it's locally super exponentially stabilizable to uh, a given uh, trajectory. You uh, issued from uh, a control p bar in L2 lock and use an initial data u0 bar. Uh, if we uh, locally, uh, for any row, uh, strictly positive, and for all initial data close to u0 bar, we, we can find a L2 lock control such that uh, the trajectory corresponding to u0 p uh, is uh, close uh, super exponentially to the your uh, reference target. Uh, okay. And uh, let me also uh, make the following remark before uh, giving the uh, first result and uh, some sketch of the proof. Okay. So if uh, lambda g for a given uh, g uh, is uh, zero, then phi g, the eigenvector, as a solution, phi g as initial data and zero as control solves our billionaire control system. And under the assumption that lambda g is equal to zero, the linearized system for our billionaire control around this reference uh, is exactly this equation. Okay, we will have assumption on this equation, so on the linearized model, and this is rather uh, common. So our first result concerns local super exponential stability for two under an exact controllability assumption for this linearized system. Uh, and in the first part of the proof, for which we assume that lambda g is equal to zero. And uh, there is a simple argument to deal with the case lambda g is not zero. So we do not prove that only for the ground state, which is the case g equal one, you can do it for any j. And the more technical part is, of course, the first part when lambda g is assumed to be uh, zero. Okay? So um, we introduce the following natural condition. Let P strictly positive be a given time and AB satisfying the, the assumption we gave before. We say that the pair AB is G null controllable in time T. If there exists a constant which depend, may depend on T in general, yes, such that for any initial data Y0 in X, there is a control P in L2, which uh, uh, satisfies this cost uh, estimate, uh, and such that uh, the solution of your linearized equation is vanishing at time t. Okay? Uh, a corollary of definition is that it's said to be g null controllable if it's, uh, there is a, exists a time for which it's true. Okay? Uh, let me remark that the control's cost is given by uh, this uh, relation, if it exists. Of course, it can be uh, infinity. We are not interested by this case, but uh, okay. So our first result, which uh, is uh, we assume the above uh, hypothesis, and uh, we add the fact that the pair AB is assumed to be general controllable then 2 is locally super exponentially stabilizable to phi g for any g bigger than 1. Uh, the difficulty is uh, to uh, have condition which guarantees that AB is g null controllable. Then you have to uh, use the moment method and to have an estimate, precise estimate on the cost function for the linearized problem. So here we add the following assumption. We uh, make the assumption we did before on A, but we assume now that we have the following gap condition, which is satisfied. And on B, we have, not very surprising, the type of non-vanishing condition we saw before, 
think if B is the multiplication by mu, and uh, the scalar product is just the L2 product, you go back to the integral over omega of mu psi g psi k is non-vanishing for all k larger than 1. And we ask for uh, more than an asymptotic behavior. Uh, we ask that this series is finite. There exists a tau strictly positive that we have uh, this is uh, finite. And there, there are uh, several examples in 1D uh, or in radial case. So when you use a moment method, unfortunately, you have to switch to 1D result or in a ball with radial arguments. So under this hypothesis on the lambda k and on b, you get that the pair a, b is g null controllable. So as a corollary, sorry, combining the two results, you deduce that uh, under these conditions, 3, 6, and 7, uh, you have a super exponential, local super exponential stabilizability. Uh, so as I said before, these vanishing conditions are not surprising. They appear in the ball, uh, Marsden, uh, Slamrod paper, in Zoiswa paper, in Beauchard Laurent, and in many papers. Also in the papers by, uh, by uh, Bosquin, Sigalotti, and, uh, okay. Uh, it it's also can be easily checked that this condition is absolutely necessary for the linear system using Fourier expansion of the solution. So uh, a very simple example of application, the 1D uh, heat equation with Dirichlet boundary condition. And you take the multiplication operator by a sufficiently smooth potential function mu. Actually, the smoothness is that mu is in H3 of 0, 1. Then we know the lambda k and we know the eigenvalues and the gap condition holds with alpha equal pi. The fact that there is a shift with lambda one is a detail. It can be, you, you can prove it easily. And uh, moreover, one can show that if this quantity are non-vanishing, uh, is non-vanishing and this uh, infinite set of uh, non-vanishing condition is satisfied, then we have I go back because I suspect uh, seven is the condition on B and uh, on the, this condition. And uh, this comes uh, from, uh, we adapt some arguments from Beauchard Laurent. Uh, and an example is that mu of X satisfies this sufficient condition. So they also hold for each equation with Neyman boundary condition. We gave example with variable coefficient, radial solution, uh, of the 3D equation set in a ball. Um, there is extension to degenerate parabolic equation due to Canarsa and Urbani. So let me give a very short, uh, because I'm maybe running out of time. I have to be careful. Oh, yeah. I, uh, oh. Uh, so I will switch uh, very quickly. Uh, we make just a difference between uh, the the solution of our bilinear control in the case lambda g equals zero and uh, the solution when uh, p is equal to zero and you start with a with a trivial solution pg cg zero okay then this solves this non-linear control problems with non-homogeneous with this term okay and uh, uh, we uh, keep in mind that we have a uh, this uh, type of estimate, we can prove that uh, we can prove actually that if we consider v minus y, which is uh, correspond to u minus cg minus y, uh, so we want, uh, of course, w to be small. Uh, it solves this problem with v as a source term. And p. Okay. Then uh, what we can prove, I uh, will not detail this, okay. Uh, under this type of condition, we have an iterative process, um, argument. We construct intervals of time, okay? And uh, for which uh, we start, we have initialization process, and then we go back the induction process, and we, using the fact that AB is general controllable, we drive back Y to zero, and then we can end up with this type of estimate. And this is what allows us to conclude. When lambda g is zero, we make this short transform, and it works. 
the proof of the second theorem involving the gap condition relies, as I said, on the moment method and sharp estimate on B orthogonal families and control stall cost due to Canarsa, Martinez, and von Kostunov. Uh, we do not use uh, directly uh, the inverse function theorem. We can do it directly with a, a very nice quadratic estimate on W, the solution of the W is, uh, I recall, U minus Cg minus uh, Y. And that's the reason why we can have uh, explicit estimates. These were our first results. Uh, thanks to some discussion with Jean-Michel, uh, we ended up with a more precise theorem, which is uh, exact controllability issues. So uh, we do the, we assume the former hypothesis on A and B. Uh, again, that AB is general controllable in any time, okay? And, but now we suppose that the control cost uh, for the linear system satisfy this uh, estimate for small time, or given time T0, where nu is strictly positive. Then we can prove that for any T, capital T, there exists a control constant RT, such that for any u0 in the bull, bull sorry, of center psi g and uh, uh, rt of, of uh, radius rt, there, is a, there exists a L2 control such that you can drive back at time capital T u2 psi g. And we also prove explicit estimate on the console's cost. Once again, precising uh, uh, assumption on non-vanishing condition and uh, this type of condition, then the pair AB is null controllable, and we can apply what we done before. This can be generalized because we have a parabolic type equation to semi-global uh, result, two semi-global results. This one. And this one. So I will skip uh, fast because otherwise I will not uh, end up, uh, uh, especially this one. So uh, the, the, in particular, what it means is that we have, uh, we can show that every initial data which is in, uh, which is not orthogonal to phi one is controllable to the evolution uh, of uh, the dynamical system without control. Uh, it's not exactly, uh, it's controllable to this, the projection on phi1, on psi1, the ground state. And here we assume that A is accretive, so that sigma is zero. Before not, but for these two results, we have to assume that. Uh, so I skip this. And uh, uh, the question I was wondering uh, when I started to work on this, was this strange condition very weird for somebody coming from linear control, but you understand that you cannot avoid it, at least from this, uh, it's a necessary condition. And I go back to, again, Enrique's article devoted to the Schrodinger equation, because he defined the elements of the infinite matrix as this one, when you think to be the multiplication by the real function mu. And, uh, it's not only that you request that these coefficients are non-vanishing to have asymptotic properties, like in the Beauchard Laurent paper. What is pointed out in uh, Enrique's paper is they also play a crucial role in the choice of the functional spaces and the norms you have to deal with if you want to get positive controllability uh, results uh, linked to uh, Hilbert uniqueness method associated to the linearized problem. Okay. So when I started to seek to that, I was not satisfied because I say, okay, in practice, you, one can prove that uh, this non-vanishing condition hold uh, generically, at least in 1D. Uh, but in, in practice, it is hard to exhibit large classes. And when I say large, infinite, classes of function which satisfy this. And also the ability to provide such example rely on the explicit knowledge of the uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A. So what we uh, worked on with uh, Christina was to uh, find uh, an, uh, uh, an analytical method and constructive, because in the sense that it leads to algorithm, 
to build large classes of uh, such fun potential function. Okay. Uh, they can be polynomial, but also other classes of function with different properties than the usual one which are exhibited. Uh, they also satisfy the sufficient condition on B that you require either for our stabilizability result, our controllability result, or controllability result by Beauchard, Laurent, and several people. It has a flexibility, and also uh, you need only uh, implicit knowledge. Uh, that means we uh, were able to do it with uh, PDs with more general boundary conditions, so, such as mixed Dirichlet Robin boundary condition. And uh, it applies to not only heat equation, but uh, dispersive equation, wave equation. And as I said, it's, it leads to an algorithm. So let me just uh, give uh, the application to this model with Schrodinger equation, but here subjected to Dirichlet condition on the zero, x equal zero, and uh, this Robin condition on uh, x equal one. Uh, so this models the motion of a quantum particle in a box with a perfect reflecting wall at x equals zero and a non-standard wall at x equals one. And there are references uh, with physicists with, uh, which studied such models. Okay, so uh, one can prove then the following theorem that uh, there is uh, an infinite uh, class of mu using our uh, uh, analytical method and algorithm and such that the lambda, the, the coefficient uh, Enrique introduced, satisfies this asymptotic behavior, and you have a local uh, exact controllability result with a, I will not detail, uh, sorry for that, but uh, I'm running out of time. So this extends the uh, beauchard laurent result for Schrodinger equation to the case of mixed uh, uh, condition, and here you deal with H2 instead of H3, but this is not surprising. We gave also other application to parabolic equation, wave or beam equation. So uh, this is only uh, the beginning and there are many things we, we still don't know. Uh, we are working on extension to unbounded uh, operator. It's a work in progress, almost uh, done. Uh, of course, there is something which is not satisfactory, it's that whenever the moment method is used, it reduces the scope, um, but I have no idea how to do, but uh, that's a very interesting question. And of course, uh, semilinear parabolic dynamical systems and more complex model, if you put non-linearities in the B, numerics. Yeah. And now let me end up with thanks to Enrique, at first for the mathematics you brought in the field of control theory, because I, when I read your papers, I learn a lot, or when I discuss with you, that's uh, as a case for lower energy estimate for other part of my work on hyperbolic uh, equation, and I, I, I gain a lot from discussing with you in, uh, in Bilbao. And uh, we started in 2009, 2010, if I remember well, a very rich partnership with the Beckham, the research center you initiated, and the Centro de Ciencias de Benasque. Uh, 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 Giuseppe Butazzo spoke about that this morning, uh, no, yesterday, sorry. And for the recurrent uh, biannual, uh, today, uh, biannual workshop summer school, uh, created by Enrique with Gunther and then uh, and with Giuseppe and Olivier Glass joined later. And this was done, uh, and we had also uh, uh, an important partner with the Center for Modeling in Santiago de Chile, within the GDR of, on control of PDEs that I directed from France, and the GDR on control of PDEs that I coordinated for France in partnership with Pierre Marco for Italy, and uh, with Olivier and... Uh, and um, I'm sorry, I'm running of time. So we could organize a lot of events. And, uh, and I thank really Enrique for creating this very rich interaction and mixing young, junior and senior through conferences, schools, workshops and collaborative research. So I ended up with this. Happy birthday to you, Enrique. Thanks for all the mathematics, 
all the dynamic of researches you brought in the field of control of PDEs and in more larger fields and in several institutions and worldwide. Now we are in uh, Erlangen and uh, I'm happy to, to be here and to write this, uh, to, to give a talk and uh, thank you for that and uh, for bringing all this to the community. Thank you. thank you. Merci, Fatia. Merci. So I, I really thank your words. Uh, actually, you, you, you have been a, a constant uh, support, not only for me, because you are a supportive person. So I think you, you have this, uh, not only the mathematical talent, but also this uh, special, say, personal and uh, sensitivity, this social engagement, this spirit of... Uh, renovation of uh, you know community and um, yeah i mean for me it was people like you were really those that uh, you know uh, made things easier and and worth uh, continuing right so we know now for each other for many many years yeah. and uh, yeah i mean I'm, I'm very glad that you are here today with us and, uh, but I wanted also to take the opportunity to, to thank you, right? Because, you know, you and without you and many others, we will never have got uh, all these little things you mentioned that when you pile them together, well, I mean, it's fine, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you. And thanks to the organizer too. It's really nice to be here, even if it's virtual. And we wait Thank for you. you in Erlangen, okay? But be trained uh, yeah. on, on your bike before you come, okay? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in you long time, I didn't like the, the city uh, bike. Uh, is it, yeah, but is it flat? Because uh, I tried to flat, bike in the, in the Pyrenees, it's not yeah. enough flat, no, no. flat, flat for me. I can invite you to Bayreuth. This is not flat. So then you have to <laughs> exercise. <huh? laughs> Then I, I need to go with uh, with uh, Marius and do some training. A lot. Thank you, Fatia. Sorry. Thank, Thank you. you for for the talk. I don't know if there is a there. I think there are some questions. Yeah, Michel Cohen is raising the hand. Uh, so, so thank you, Fatia, for this uh, very wonderful uh, talk and very interesting also. Uh, I have a, a question about P of T. So you you have uh, this control P of T. Is it possible instead of P of T to use P of U? And U, of course, it's maybe a complicated function because uh, it, it's not P of the norm of U, it could be P of uh, something non-local or some, some complicated function on U. Is it possible to um, do something like that? Or? Um, Right away like that, I don't know. We have to, because we're really using, uh, if it's a P of U, it's not, I mean, we have to do work. I mean, this is not direct actually, but that's a very interesting question. Okay. No, I, I was thinking to, but maybe also thinking to the work by Bochard and uh, Marbach, uh, I found very nice uh, it's, when B is nonlinear with respect to U also. But uh, I, did, I didn't know that there were models where you could have P depending on U. Uh, but this, this would be the control, so you can do what you want. So you, you can, yeah, yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's a very interesting question. But I don't know. It's not right away because we are really using the structure. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. If there is another question or comment. I, I, if not, I have a question, uh, Fatia, for, for your for the algorithm. You say that you are able yeah. to, to use even if you have only partial or implicit, yeah. I think you say yeah. knowledge yeah. of the the the, the hand function. Yeah. So it works in the do you have constraints in for the dimension? I mean it works with two, three. No, but uh, no, no, it works in one D. Actually, this so kind of condition, you, you have it when you when it's one D and you can say something otherwise. Uh, but the, the idea behind is that it's not easy to check <clears throat> at all. Especially if you look at the Robin problem we looked at, uh, the, the lambda k are not known explicitly. You, you know the form of the eigenvectors, but not of the lambda k. So, so, so the idea behind is to say, okay, you don't, you have the lambda k and the p k. You have this strange condition, which is uh, new for me, totally new. And I say, okay, but behind you, 
you know that lambda k phi k are linked to a spectral problem. And the idea is to use that. But uh, it's very technical. I mean, the, the architecture of the, of the ideas is, uh, you, I can explain it, but uh, the, the, a lot of computation, a lot of uh, analysis behind, and then there, are, there is an algebraic part. But uh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's rather technical. But the, the idea behind for me uh, was uh, your lambda k and phi k, they are not uh, as those function. They are linked by the spectral problem. So they are linked to A, and of course you should use that. So we found a way how to use that. I mean, it's, you have to trust that there is a magic formula, but I was trusting that there were magic formula. And uh, we, we were able to prove that there were a magic formula, but it gives much more information. I, I didn't have time to, to detail. It gives much more information. But okay, it's 1D so. in any way when you use a moment method. Of course, yeah, yeah, of course. You, you end up with... Okay. Uh, my, 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 my concern is really to say, do we have also some latitude to, uh, with another point of view of not only looking for P, but looking also for mu? This algorithm, it's, it's, a, it's only partial, but it's, it's a first uh, step to, because the algorithm, as I said, give more information. You can, you can have something which seems, seems to be not nice, then you can show that you can change this functional space where to set up the problem and then your mu becomes okay. So, but since it's, a, it's very intricate, very technical conditions, but the architecture is natural. But, but at the beginning, you have really to hope that something is going to work. Okay, I see. But it's one. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. There is another question in the chat. I don't know if, if uh, Reginaldo can, can ask uh, directly. If not, he, he's asking if this result still holds for the operate for degenerate operator. Yeah. You, 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 which result? Uh, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> Because there are several ones. I mean, as yeah. I said, the, 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 the part with stabilizability, exact controllability, they old. The, the results for generate operator were done by uh, Pierre Marco yeah. and uh, Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it works. No, the, 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 the stuff is that we were aware that there were results on hyperbolic equation and diffusive equation and almost nothing on... Uh, on scalar input bilinear control for heat equation. So we started uh, on this basis for Christina's PhD actually. And uh, okay. we thank also Jean-Michel who gave an uh, indication and that's we could get the second result. So thanks for, to Jean-Michel with more expert than I, I, for me, it was new, completely new. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So we thank again, Fatia, for this very interesting talk. Uh, thank Thanks you to much. all of you. I, okay. I love Chile. Okay, so I think it's, it's time we can pass to the next speaker. So Jaime, are you there? Are you ready? Yes, here am I. Okay, can you share your, your screen? Try to share the screen. Okay, okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Ahora sí. Now we see it. Very okay. nice. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, we first, a couple of minutes. Okay. Are you ready? We, we can start? Oh, we can, as you want. Oh, well, have a couple of minutes if you want. I'm ready anyway. Okay, we, there are almost two minutes, so we can. I think we can we can start. So, okay, for for me it's a, a pleasure to to present uh, Jaime Ortega from Universidad de Chile. He, he is uh, he obtained a PhD in mathematics from Universidad Complutense under the direction of Enrique. Now he's full professor of uh, Department of Mathematical Engineering and researcher of the CMM in Universidad de Chile. So. Uh, Jaime, we, we will talk about stability estimate for the semi-described linearized Benjamin Bonamahoney equation. So, Jaime, thank you. 
Okay, thanks a lot for me. Well, firstly, uh, thanks to, to Carlos, Rodrigo, Sebastián for this hard work. It's, uh, this is a wonderful, a wonderful congress. For me, it's really a pleasure to, to talk here. I'm, as I told yesterday, one of the estimados, the, the old students, Enrique. And uh, I, it's a pleasure to see the friends, to, to be part of this party. This is, this is the first thing. Okay, uh, I'm going to to present some some new results of one of my students. Uh, this work in collaboration. Uh, this work is in in collaboration with uh, Rodrigo Lecaro from University of Santa Maria and Ariel Perez, which is a PhD student. He is close to, to finish this, his work. Uh, first, I want to see this uh, picture we made several years ago in Bilbao for for celebrate uh, the anniversary of Carlos. Uh, for that reason, firstly, happy birthday, Carlos. It's, it's a real <laughs> pleasure. And thanks, Jaime. <laughs> um, we, are, we, are, we are here celebrating another anniversary now. It's the a, it's a contrary. <laughs> OK. Uh, for that reason, it's a pleasure to, to be part of this thing. OK. Well, I, the sketch is. I'm going to talk a few. What are discrete, uh, discrete and continuous? This is uh, an old questions, uh, and what happened with unique continuous properties and some references and results. And I, I will not enter to to the technical detail because are very hard. And but I'm going to try to explain something. Okay. Uh, I took an old uh, slide of Enrique. I I thought. <laughs> Uh, from in, in 2020 and uh, 2012, Enrique in the Congress of Chile puts this slide. He say uh, the control problems and now inverse problems are in PD are very important. They, they are important because they appear in, in several uh, real applications. It's uh, in quantum mechanics, in, in optimization, in control, fluids everywhere appear these kind of problems. And for that reason, it is natural to, to ask the idea what happens. The is to make a kind of uh, social. Sorry. Ah, yeah, okay. Okay, I could do. Uh, and, um, and it's quite natural to ask what happens when you, when you go to numerics. It is, it is important the numeric for when you are thinking in real problems. For that reason, as Enrique said in that Congress, this this need a new analytical tools in anything we're facing numerical simulation simulation problems. And, and so that reason is an is an old question, but with uh, a an, an natural and easy question with a very difficult answer. Okay. What happened when we are thinking in, in the continuous problems, uh, the, the unique continuation properties appear in, in, in very natural way. The controllability of PDE are well related with unique continuation property, with Carleman estimates, uh, and so on. Uh, more recently, the people's, say a lot of people which work in control problems begin to start a study inverse problem because they are very, very close in the techniques. The use of Carleman's inequality, the use of unique continuation properties appear also in a natural way. When you study the identifi identifiability and stability results, for that reason, it's, it's natural also when you are studying a, an optimal control problem, what happened with the minimizer problems, what happened with the critical with the, the critical points. Well, for that reason, it's natural. You, you have a, a discrete problem. The question is, is the mesh, is the mesh side go to zero? It is real that the, the discrete problem converts, in some sense, to the, to the continuous problem. This is very, very natural question. And the other one is, if I want to study the, the control, the, the continuous problem, if I can use some some uh, kind of converges in order to have that the discrete problems in, in, in finding difference uh, and, and uh, finding element method, this converts to the continuous problem. For that reason, these are more or less uh, the questions. Uh, as I said, the question is natural. The, the answer is not natural as it's difficult. 
okay? Uh, what happened with the with the discrete problem, okay? Firstly, more a lot of people which were in control here know that the unique continuation properties are very well connected with the with the with the control problem, the the so-called quantitative estimates, okay? But what, are in, what is a classical uh, definition of unique continuous property? We have a, an equation, P to U is equal to zero, and U is zero in a suitable region, could be in the, in the interior, in the boundary, or whatever. The, the answer is, if you, that's implied that U is equal to zero. Okay. This is, this is the, the question. But when we go to uh, find difference, a very, a very classical contrast sample, uh, of uh, uh, with uh, due to other red caviar appears in the in the in the notes of Enrique also say so this is not true. For instance, we can take the the Laplace, discrete Laplacian, the classical discrete Laplacian with five points. Okay, and um, you is zero here and you is zero in these two lines. The only thing that we can see is you is equal to zero in the red points, but we cannot assure we can, we, that u is zero in all domain. For that reason, uh, the, the first question of unique continuation property holds for continuous, but does not hold for the discrete in a, in a classical, in a, in a very simple case. For that reason, the question is what we can do, where, what we must do to, to have the results, or what happened in, in this kind of things. Okay. Well, what happened? Uh, why uh, this this problems appear? Well, uh, there is a, a note of uh, a paper of Enrique in same review where he put this example, okay, this classical example of uh, eigenvalues of, of the spectrum of the of the Laplacian. And what is the problem? Well, appear some some eigenvalues which does not converge to this, to continuous case. Okay, uh, that appear several eigenvalues with are due to the, the structure of the discrete case. And this uh, make a lot of noise in all those things and we cannot have uh, this, uh, the, the, the continuous results. Well, for that reason, there are several people who have begun to study this, this problem. There are several works of Enrique also, but also there is work of Silvani Redosa and uh, Lucy Boudouin, where they study the one case for hyperbolic case, okay? Uh, Fran Boyer and uh, La Rousseau have several works also where they want to study what happened with control uh, and try to obtain a Carleman estimate for, for several equations, for in particular for the case. There is a, a nice work of Silvana Redosa and Freddy de Gournay, where they study the, the Laplacian operator because they are interested to, to try to, to obtain a result for, for the well-known Calderon problem, that the, the, the classical inverse problems. And there are another work for the semi-discrete Calderon estimate for parabolic equation of Boyer and Lebozo. And recently, there is a fully discrete Calderon estimate for parabolic operator Due to Hernandez Santa Maria and Gonzalez, but there are several another another work, but I I not mention all of them here. Okay, uh, in which work in this work in which we are interested, where we want to study the the so-called Benjamin Bona Mahoney equation, the, the the classical BBM equation, have this structure. And it's a, it's a model proposed by Benjamin Bona Mahoney in, in 72 as a model for the propagation of one direction, one dimensional, unidirectional, small amplitude long ways in nonlinear dispersive media. Okay. This, uh, this is one of the, of the equations from the family of the dispersive equation. Okay. But this equation has a very particular thing because the, he has a very particular infinitesimal generator for the semi-group, okay? which is this, is this one. Okay? Uh, here are some references of, of, this, of this problem. Okay? In, in particular, I mentioned the work of Lionel Rossier uh, and Bin Yusang, uh, okay? where they, they develop a unique continuation property in a, in a periodic domain, and, uh, 
and uh, and so on. Well, uh, in a in a world for Enrique with uh, with Shu Sang, they study a linearized version of EDM, but with a potential ADX which depends on space, which depends on the space. And the question is, what happened with unique continuation property? And they say, well, if we consider a suitable boundary conditions, in particular, they consider u is zero in the in the in the bulk stream of the of the line, and uh, then the solution is uh, the unique solution of this problem is u equals zero. Okay, but with some suitable condition on alpha and beta, which are the 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 potential of the equation. Okay. And uh, Solimigu also proved another another result, consider alpha equal minus one and beta equal zero, and they study also some controllability results. Okay. The the question is uh, what happened if we go to to the discrete case? Okay. That is uh, the few the few idea. Okay. Uh, why we fall on this uh, on this problem? Because uh, with uh, Luisa Teresa uh, and Rodrigo Lecaro, we were we were working. We have a working in progress in which we are interested in to study Kalman estimates, Kalman estimate, but for the Calderon problem. That 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 means we want to to have some unique uh, unique con continuation property for the Laplacian, but with boundary terms. No, this problem is quite a nightmare. We have a couple of years working on that, uh, and the computations are very hard, but we hope to have results uh, uh, very close. Okay, But this allows us to obtain some results on some discrete Kalman estimate for the, uh, for the Laplace. Okay, But what happened? Well, Yamamoto, in, in, a, in a world, he studied the, the linearized BBM equation, and he, he proved that if you have a, a suitable Kalman estimate for the Laplacian, you can go and to obtain a good result, a unique continuation property for VDM equation. Okay. This is a, a few. In particular, Yamamoto established a, 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 for this equation where, where he has a, a time and space dependent potential, okay, and he showed, oh, oh sorry. Uh, 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 uh. And he showed that if u and the and the space derivative are zero in one side and u is zero in the in the other side, okay, uh, at the initial time, then you have the u is equal to zero. Okay, this is you need to start with uh, with uh, this condition. Okay. Well, the idea our idea is. If we can repeat the same result of Yamamoto, but when you go to discrete case, okay. this is a few a few idea. Okay. Well, the first thing is uh, which is uh, the the BBM the semi discrete equation. Okay. Well, the first thing is uh, you can discrete size. You have a semi discretization. That means you discrete only the space, not the time, and you can rewrite in finite difference. Uh, equations, the the VVM equation, and give you this uh, this uh, this model. Okay, uh, we consider the 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 same uh, finite difference approximation of Fumbrick. Okay, and when you go to continuous case, okay, it, you can see that uh, you can have some Kalman estimates for the for this case. That means. Uh, if uh, if u is small is small regular small enough regular for you can have a couple of weights lambda zero you for lambda zero is sufficiently large you can prove that there exists a constant is zero which depends of this uh, of these quantities such that you have this Kalman estimate mm -hmm. for is bigger than u zero okay and um, and from a colorary of the work of Yamamoto, okay, you can prove that if e, u is a solution 
of the linearized BBM equation satisfying these two conditions, then u is equal to zero everywhere. Well, uh, what is uh, the proof of, of the results in the continuous case? The, the idea is to try to consider weights of this of this form, okay, that uh, you have a double exponential weight, e exponential of S, S, phi, where phi is Lc, with phi must verify the same condition, the condition is we need that, we need, we need the sign of this derivative, okay. With this, uh, with this uh, condition, it is possible to construct a Carleman estimate for this problem. Okay. I will not enter to, to the computation because it's, it's quite long. And you, you, can, you can have this estimate. Okay. But the idea is if you have this estimate, which is, uh, which is come from the, from the, from the Laplacian, then you can make a change of variable, and then you can obtain a, an estimate for VVM, for linearized VVM. Well, uh, what, with, what you can see in the case of discrete VVM equation? Well, the, the first big problem, when you, when you go from the, the continuous case to, to the discrete case, the, the big problem is you cannot take uh, or the, this, the, the main uh, thing in the in Carleman estimate is when you have the Carleman estimate, you can take the values of the parameters as large as you want. In, 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 and in that sense, you can banish, you can, cause, you can banish several terms on the, on the inequality. And in this way, you can get the unique continuation property. Okay. But the problem is, is when you go from uh, continuous to discrete, the, the parameters that appear in Carleman estimate cannot be taken arbitrarily and have a strong relation with the mesh. And, and this is uh, the, main, uh, the main difficulty. Okay? Well, which are uh, the things that, that we have? Okay? Well, the thing that we say is, if uh, there exists a, 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 a size of the mesh is zero, which depends on the the, um, the 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 norm of the of the potentials, and, the, and if you consider these two terms equal zero for 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 all time, and u equal zero in the in the in an internal mesh, then u is equal zero everywhere. That means you can repeat, in some sense, the, the same result. Uh, what are the problems when you, when you begin to start working in the seeds? Well, you need to define several different mesh which appear, because when you work with, uh, when you make the integration by parts in the discrete case, you need to work with the, with the classical mesh, but you need to construct a couple of mesh called the dual mesh, which are which are not only the points, we need the middle point of the of the point of the mesh. And you need to consider this this uh, this uh, this boundary. And you need to define also which is the boundary in the in the cases. And you have several boundaries in the in the computation. Okay. And also you need to consider for the integration by part several operators which are uh, not consider only the points of the match, they consider also the middle point of the match, and you need to compute some quantities on that. Okay. Also, you need to redefine which are the normals and the trace of an operator. Mm -hmm. What uh, what you what we can what we can prove in, in our case. Okay, the, the result says, well, if we consider a weight verifying the several condition, the same condition, that, that means we, we need a sign of the space derivative. For lambda zero, a parameter enough, large enough, there exists another parameter E zero and H zero, which depends on the, on the, 
on the north of the weight, and a constant c, but this constant is independent of a, such that we can construct this estimate. But we must know that s, the parameter s in the in the um, in the column estimates, cannot be uh, arbitrary. This parameter s has a strong relation with the size of the mesh, mm -hmm. and, and this is this results is quite similar to the ones obtained by Silvana Rodosa and Boyer, but depends on the equation. They have several uh, powers of the, of this one, a two third or one half or something like that. Okay. Well, what is the idea? The idea is when we have this equation and we can rewrite this equation in a in in a way in a as a parabolic equation. Okay, with, with the Laplacian, and we put all terms in the other side, and we try and we will use, to use the Carleman estimate for uh, for Laplace. This is the the main idea of the of the proof. Okay, and as I told, we need to define several operators. So I will to that. And uh, the good thing is we can try we it is possible to recover several of the estimates and integration by parts that the people use in the in the discrete case okay for this case we follow the all the the notations of uh von Savoyer. but we can continue with this and with this discrete carleman estimate we can obtain our 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 results okay and um, but that's uh, and uh, of course we need also a, a discrete version of the of the of the weight inequality. Okay. Well, which are um, uh, which open process here? But this is a, a starting point of the problem. For that reason, the first question, the first thing is. Uh, what happens when we go to another another dimension? If we want to think in in, in problems in, in 2D or 3D, well, it is not trivial because uh, the way to to work with the boundary condition is not easy. And uh, you when you go to different direction to different to more dimensions, appear several extra terms in in this estimate. The second question is we we obtain the result for the semi discrete the semi discretized problem. The question is we can go to a full discretized problem. We, we think that it's, it is possible. And the other question is uh, this is a linear isotope. What happened with the nonlinear terms? And uh, this is something to do, something to think. Maybe the idea will be try to, to use some fixed point theorem, but I, we must think a few about that. Okay. Well, um, Happy birthday, Enrique. Thanks for for the invitation. And uh, this is your picture in in the in, in a corner close to, to the faculty in Corvea, Esquina Chaure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Jaime. Thanks, Jaime. I don't know if there is some question or comments. Well, I have a comment, right? So because Gorbea, I mean, this this picture is taken near the CMM. Uh, we, we were visiting uh, at that time Jaime and Rodrigo, uh, together with Carlos and the others, uh, took care of uh, housing us there during the summer 2013, summer in here, winter in Chile. And, uh, and then walking in the street, I realized that I was living in the corner or very close to the corner between Echauren and Gorbea, right? So maybe these names don't don't say anything to you, but when you are um, when you are bus born, you ide immediately identify, right? That these were also Basque people, you know? And then uh, checking, I, I realized that actually Gorbea was one of the founders of the, of the University of Chile, no? Uh, Jaime, I don't remember exactly what the details was. I think Gorbea was born in Vitoria near Bilbao, and then he he went to Ecole Polytechnique in France. He was a student there. And then the, the, the leaders of Chile came to, to France to hire the best uh, young engineers, right? To, to do the civil, uh, you know, works of the, you know, the, the, the roads and the, the highways and the tunnels and the, and the trains to build uh, the infrastructure of Chile. 
And then Gorbea went there, and other than working as an engineer, he founded the university. Okay, so this corner is there, and I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's one of the memories we have of this fantastic mm -hmm. trip in 2013, where, yeah, I mean, and, and this was the Chile plan. So Chile plan is one day, one kilo, right? So, I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, everywhere, right? So we were even in the house of Neruda, right? Uh, we were having yes, plans, there you know, in Valparaiso, in these balconies, in the terraces, I remember with Carlos and Lola and Jaime. And, okay, so that was uh, a fantastic uh, experience, yes. Okay, so thank you, Jaime. Uh, Jaime is one of the estimados. Estimados is that time where there were, I don't know, like four or five simultaneous PhD students, and then uh, there was not email, essentially, and then we were communicating with uh, documents, and then I would used to, to write some notes uh, with several problems and make xeroxes and put them in the mailbox of each of them and uh, right so to address them all simultaneously i use this uh, estimado like deer right so the, the, the five of them so yeah and no, this uh, thing where, i don't know who was uh, lucero castro, Carlos castro Sorin. Sorin, and maybe who else uh, and rafa later who Rafa Oribe later. Rafa, 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 yeah, and René Dagger, and uh, yeah, Gemma. Gemma, Dagger, Gemma sí, Ana. Well, Ana well, was quite the uh, thing, but uh, yeah, okay. We, we so, are thinking with, with Lucero and the rest of Estimado, we hope in the, in the next future we will have the Estimados Workshop. Estimados Workshop. <laughs> <laughs> we are planning, we are planning, you will have news. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again, Jaime. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows Jaime and everyone that knows Jaime knows that he is, uh, you know, a very distinguished uh, individual, not only as a mathematician, but especially as a person. Yeah. Thanks to you for your friendship and for all these years. Yeah, I mean, you came uh, to, I remember very well when uh, René Letelier, a Chilean uh, uh, yes, yes. In, I, I arrived with René later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember he told me, oh, there is a student, Jaime from Chile, he's coming, would you like to mentor him? And I said, well, of course I can, I can give it a try. And, and this is the result. So I owe this to, to René Letelier that unfortunately passed away uh, soon after that. So yes, yeah, exactly. to see how much you achieved. Yeah, he will have yes. been proud. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you, Jaime, for this for the talk. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we, we are finishing the the this 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 session. If there is no another question or comment, I, I think that we will pass the word to. Well, I, I take the opportunity to say happy birthday, Enrique, and thank you for all your inspiring work. So very nice, and also I will give the word to to Carlos, Carlos Conca. Or Sebastian, maybe. Can we make maybe ten minutes? Um, because the the free space starting at at four Chilean time, so have a lot of time. We have twenty minutes. Yeah. Okay, so we Please. will take this time to. <laughs> to go for a coffee or something. And in 20 minutes, we uh, yeah. you will start. Thank you. OK, we we'll see you in 20 minutes.
Ok. Um, we continue or no? Maybe we can wait to Enrique. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Enrique is here. Estoy aquí, lo más que tenía apagado el video, sí. Ok, thank you everybody for continuing with us. Carlos, um, you can start. You are muting, Carlos. Carlos. Uh, Hey, Carlos. Okay, it's okay yeah. now. We are hearing me. Yes. Do you hear me? Okay. So the idea in this space is to make a kind of uh, social or friendship tribute to Enrique with personal testimonies of uh, life experience uh, with him. We will start with uh, Rodrigo, Sebastian, and myself, because uh, we have prepared uh, a, a special souvenir for him. Of course, uh, we will not hand it to him personally because of we are just uh, virtually connected, but uh, Sebastian will take this uh, souvenir to him in his next uh, trip to Germany. And before passing the, the floor to Rodrigo, uh, I would like to insist on the fact that, uh, on the great importance that, uh, that for our country, for Chile, to host uh, this Congress. So many, many thanks to all of the speakers and to all of the people who has been chairman along the different sessions of the Congress. So uh, Rodrigo, I pass the floor to you. Okay, thank you, Carlos. Well, um, well, Enrique, how I can say, uh, thank you for everything, not only for the scientific issues, for the friendship, and for your advice. When I spend time in Bilbao with my family, I learn a lot of things with you. Uh, and how can I say? Sorry, Nag Enrique and Askeri Casco. Gracias, Rodrigo. Sebastián. OK, yes. So, Enrique. Just a, a few words in addition to everything that has been said. Thank you for all your support during my young career as a mathematician. Uh, during my doctoral stay with you in 2015, even in that period of black light, remember, you support me to get ahead. I also thank you for allowing me to meet your beautiful family, Magali, uh, Magali Johanne, and Ainara. And I take the opportunity to thank them for sharing Enrique with us. In this short year as a mathematician, I can say that the support of the family is essential to carry out this journey. Uh, so one last sentence to celebrate your 60 years is due to our famous Chilean singer, Violeta Parra. And I say this word in, in Spanish, sorry. Uh, que viva tu nacimiento, bello botón de rosal, por la voluntad del cielo, que viva 100 años más. Thank you, Enrique, and Esquerri Casco. For Gracias, Sebastián. Gracias. Esquerri Casco, soy ahí. So, uh, together with Carlos and Rodrigo, we have this small gift for you. Let you are me... singing a song. You are singing a song, the three of you. El trio. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Let me share my screen. So, this is the a small gift for you. You, share, you, you see my, my screen? Sí, qué bonito. Yes, this is the, the Chilean flag and the Basque Country flag. Ah, muy bonito. 
Sí, 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 muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Y eso lo vas a traer tú en el avión. Así es. Ya, ya, ya. Bueno, no has puesto ahí el, el bolígrafo para ver las dimensiones, pero se entiende que es, de, que, es, que es de un tamaño moderado, ¿no? Que lo puedes meter en el avión. Sí, 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 sí. Vale, vale, vale. Muy bien. Oye, pues muchísimas gracias. Muy amables. And, and, and now, as I say, finally your family could not miss this day. Is mm -hmm. Magali there? Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, everyone. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Yo les estaba avisando de que vinieran para veros y resulta que estaban en el ajo. ¿eh? En el garlic. Estaban en el garlic. The garlic. Yeah. Hi, everyone. They were in the garlic. Yeah. Okay. So, so Magali, you yeah. start? Cuando pienso en Enrique como persona y como profesional, solo puedo sentir amor, admiración y orgullo por su entrega, dedicación, compromiso con su familia y con la matemática. Desde 1985 que lo conozco, siempre he pensado que a él le aplica el verso de Pablo Milanés, cubano nacido en el 1943, lo que brilla con luz propia nadie lo puede apagar. Para mí, Enrique es luz, tan brillante que logra iluminar a quienes lo conocen, respetan, entienden y saben quién es. Con tanta luz que ciega a quienes quisieran y han pretendido, con oscuras razones, temores y menosprecio, infructuosamente negarlo. Gracias a su sistemática perseverancia, la vida le ha regalado la oportunidad de conocer y compartir conocimiento con ustedes, sus compañeros de estudio, trabajo y dedicación en la búsqueda de explicaciones por medio de las matemáticas. Noble trabajo, como nobles son todos ustedes, por unirse a este reconocimiento, habiendo vivido en los últimos tiempos con cierta oscuridad, toda esta claridad que emana de aquí, de ustedes, es bienvenida y agradecida. Enrique, tu luz no se apagará ni en más de 60 años. Te amo. Muchas gracias, esta sorpresa inesperada. Sí. Bueno, como dice Magali, la, la perseverancia y, y, y el grupo es lo que hace que... Bueno, pero eso ha sido, yo creo que esa es la definición de, del ser humano en definitiva, ¿no? El, eh, si, si el ser humano es distinguido en la naturaleza es por eso, porque es capaz de de coordinarse, de aliarse, de, de, de ceder y compartir para ganar más en conjunto y también porque es capaz de cada mañana eh, autoalimentar eh, la fuerza que hace falta pues, para seguir, ¿no? aunque solo sea por los siguientes. Eh, para mí ha sido un honor compartir esta aventura también con Magali, por supuesto, y... Y con las esas dos que están ahí, que me suena la cara, no sé ahora mismo eh, de, qué, de qué congreso las conozco. <risa> a ver, a ver, ahí ya dice algo ahí. <risa> eh, a más señor te va a caer de tu vana ren, metida ni que se haga un y tú darás de sal. Asco, eh, es indute verdiña de sal, vaya ni que sorte o lidaucat. Sur escuti que vi y sanáis beti, edo no la juate copres, asten, eta y casten. Parque la pillota de King Holastera, Edo Alemania en visita tera, Betty Videa en Sear de Aturausur. Dio para que hubo visita que situé la Bacarric, Ispia Lai, Eta Arguichua que carchen, Baisi que está Aise volada o porrac, Eta Ochak Baitare. Al aire, Surealboan Barre, Negar, Eta Oyuca Egina Alisateak, Posic sentía las tendao. Ascoc, matemática en Arloan, do caso un postu agati que sago en Saituste, Baña esta aquí tenada, Aita Besela, Ora Indico Bea Sarela. Asco Maite Saitu, Daita. Sí, bueno, como dice Ainara, eh, Ainara cuando nació, eh, lo primero que hizo prácticamente fue coger un balón y empezar a, a darle con la mano izquierda, ¿no? Y entonces a mí me pareció evidente que Ainara era zurda. Íbamos al médico y el médico decía, no, porque 
porque la, ¿no? lo de ser diestro o zurdo se, se manifiesta, se confirma más tarde. Yo decía, joder, qué cosa más rara. O sea, para un matemático, en cuanto uno coge una bola tres veces con la mano izquierda, ya se considera que es zurdo, ¿no? Y, y así es. Y, y desde pequeña a Inara lo que le gustó era el fútbol. Y efectivamente, muchas tardes, en, estuviéramos donde estuviéramos, eh, lo que había que hacer antes de cenar o incluso después de cenar era bajar a jugar al fútbol, ¿no? Y entonces a, a Inara le, le debo el haber mejorado un poco mis skills futbolísticos que siempre fueron, digamos, de gama media-baja. ¿eh? Bueno, y yo aunque durante muchos años me estresaba más con las palabras... En los últimos tiempos eh, recurro más a la fotografía y he hecho una pequeña selección de fotos familiares como aportación, mi regalo, claro sí. por, tu, se, ay, ay, yo, bueno, por tu cumpleaños. Sorionac. Es que rica Sorionac. Sí. <ríe> mi amor. <risa> Que va aquí, va nisquio, nería y sango sen, es suena de guingo. Que boa que va aquí, va nisquio, nería y sango sen, es suena de guingo. Vaina no nela, etzenge ya ocho ría y sango. Vaina no nela, etzenge ya ocho ría y sango. Eta ni choría duen maite, eta ni choría duen maite. Que boa que va aquí, va nisquio, nería y sango se, es suena al de guingo, vaina no nela, es en que ya gochoría y sango, vaina no nela. Etzenge ya gochoría y sango, eta ni choría no es maite, eta ni choría no es maite. Qué ricasco, Yanes, qué ricasco. Muchas gracias. Eh, muy bonita selección de fotos. Bueno, ya sabéis ahora que con las fotos hay que andar con cuidado porque luego te salen todas de repente, ¿no? ¿Eh? Ollane nació en el 92, que fue el gran año, ¿no? el año de las Olimpiadas, eh, se celebraron los 500, en Barcelona los 500 años del de, de descubrimiento de América, aunque América ya estaba descubierta desde hace mucho, pero bueno, alguien llegó, ¿no? Cristóbal Colón llegó y entonces se estableció, y me acuerdo que yo era, en la época, bueno, ha sacado Lucero una foto antes del 92, por ahí de esa época de la Complutense, eh, y entonces en la complu en la época había un, un rector que era, aparte de rector, era alguien pues eh, muy capaz, eh, eh, extremadamente hábil, eh, político también, eh, Gustavo Villapalos. Y entonces a Gustavo Villapalos, al rector, se le ocurrió que también iba a ser el 500 años de, de la fundación de la Universidad Complutense. Y entonces, bueno, encontraron allá en Alcalá de Henares que era la, el nombre, ¿no? Complutense era la, el nombre de la ciudad a 30 kilómetros al, 
al noreste de Madrid, eh, Complutense era el nombre de la ciudad de Alcalá, pues encontraron un legajo de que bueno, pues había habido en la época ya pues una escuela superior, un colegio o algo, y entonces con aquello se, se consiguió que también fueran los 500 años de la Complutense. Y ese año nació Ollane, y al ser la primera, pues se llevó lo mejor y lo peor, ¿no? Lo peor posiblemente porque fueron los años pues, más activos, de más trabajo, de más viajes por mi parte. Eh, viajaba en la época para, para dos o tres semanas, cosa que ahora pues, ya nunca haría. Y, pero también se llevó lo mejor y era pues, que yo en la época tenía una fuerza que ahora evidentemente no tengo. Y me acuerdo que cuando vivíamos en Colmenar, eh, la bici que yo tenía, eh, que todavía tengo, eh, tenía una sillita atrás, entonces ponía a Ollane en la silla y nos íbamos horas a, a trotar en bicicleta por, el, por la Sierra de Madrid, que subía en la época sin demasiada dificultad. Y bueno, yo solía notar como al cabo de X minutos de rodar en la bicicleta, notaba el casco de la bicicleta de Ollane que se posaba en mi espalda y se echaba unas siestas al aire libre fantásticas rodando, ¿no? Entonces, bueno, Ollane fue la primera y la que se llevó pues un poquito pues ese, esos momentos tan intensos en los que también pues eh, es, cuando, es cuando emergieron los, es, los estimados que decía, que decía Jaime, ¿no? Bueno, los que quieran decir algunas palabras. Uh, uh, Enrique, la bicicleta se viene de, de esta época. Oh, of, uh, of it, uh, so in fact, so maybe I should talk in English because some people might not understand. So I was, I am born in Eibar. And Eibar is, uh, uh, I mean, a small town in between... Um, Uh, San Sebastian and, and Bilbao in Basque Country, just in the middle, uh, that was extremely industrial. And uh, in particular, you know, uh, even my father before the, the Civil War, my parents were working in Orbea. Orbea is a brand that you might know. I mean, you, I mean, you can still buy Orbea bicycles and they are exporting bicycles all around. Of course, nowadays there is a lot of competition And there are brands that are much more prestigious, right, for the for the true bikers. But you can still find the, the Orbea bicycles is kind of a medium kind of uh, uh, quality level and price price wise. Uh, so you know, in Eibar, bicycles they were everywhere. So they were produced in the town, and uh, and despite of the fact that the town is quite hilly because it's in a very narrow valley. We were all used to, to, to you know, to bike, um, you know, to cycle uh, since very early, uh, a very early age, right? And then for us, biking, it was natural to, to do it uh, on, on, on a slope, right? So now when, when I go to Erlangen, I said, oh, this is the paradise. So this is all flat, right? So in Erlangen, nearly flat, you can bike, cycle, you know, Uh, we have done it in several directions, at least 20 kilometers in each direction, and, and that helps once uh, one is not 30 anymore, but 60. Yeah, yeah. but and you, you, you were trained harder, so... Yeah, yeah, I mean, but I used to bike, yeah, we used to bike very, very heavy, yeah, when we were younger. Okay, thanks. So everyone, we need to, to witness life experiences with Enrique can do it now in any language. We have enough people here to translate from Basque to English, to Spanish, to French, Romanian. <laughs> so go ahead. I am say I remember with great pleasure when I went uh, first to Benasque uh, and discover the, the the way you have uh, managed to start this uh, workshop in, with a improvised part 
and with mixing a lot of uh, young and senior people and uh, uh, with improvisation and was, uh, you could uh, be there very quiet, working hard and uh, very nice for interaction. And the food was great too. <laughs> and uh, so uh, that's a very pleasant, uh, I appreciate it uh, a lot. And also when I visited uh, Bilbao, and uh, also when I saw you in several other occasions in Paris, and it was uh, great. And read the paper also. Thank you, thank you, Fatia. So yeah, so Benasque was an idea of Pedro Pascual, right? So it was a mm -hmm. Spanish uh, physicist that unfortunately passed away, but uh, he used to go with his father that was a, a, a very fan of, of the Benasque Valley for hiking since he was uh, little. And then mm -hmm. Pedro Pascual became quite influential in the Spanish uh, uh, science system, not only as a scientist, but also as a manager and capable of you know building new centers and, and attracting funding. And the idea was uh, his. And his idea was precisely a place where you don't run a workshop on the traditional spirit of, you know, sequence of talks, uh, you know, with a full program, but rather a place to, to meet, uh, to enjoy collective work and to think uh, big, right, in the sense of uh, exploring new topics, uh, yeah, new ideas. And, and it worked, and it worked. So yeah, I hope it's a big success. Yeah, I hope we can go back in 2022, although things are not clear, right? It seems numbers are yeah. raised again. I mean, my friends in Chuan Seng that was uh, with us in Madrid for a number of years and now is professor in Beijing told me that mm -hmm. numbers are even raising in, in Beijing, right? In Pekin. Yeah. Uh, Chuan, Chuan defined the process, uh, you know, the, the policy that the government is uh, developing in China that is extremely strict as, as uh, you know, as uh, trying to control to zero a system that is only approximately controllable, right? Mm, yeah, what he said. exactly. Yeah. So, and I think it's everywhere a little bit the same. So, well, it's still uncertain whether you we will be free to travel in next uh, summer. Yeah, but, uh, it's not clear. Maybe, I agree. Hopefully we will. And, and yes, so, but yeah, we are more or less same age. And mm -hmm. I think we didn't meet so early because you're your PhD was in a different topic, I think, in Lyon, right, with Denise, uh, yeah. Denise there mm -hmm. on nonlinear hyperbolic equations. But I mean, eventually this happened, and yeah, um, yeah. And, and we were so lucky then to to share many many trips and many experiences together, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks, thanks, Enrique. And as I, I said, for sure. We drew a picture who was took in Cuernavaca. I'm sure that uh, Luz, Lucero will have very fresh memories of that. We were there for a summer school with Gustavo Perla. And one night we went with Enrique to have dinner together. So I will share this. There I have two pictures of this moment. This is one of them. <laughs> Do you remember that, Enrique? Are you? Excuse me. Do you see that? No. Maybe yeah, yeah, not. yeah. We see. Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, Nicola Burke and Andre Nagbin, right? Is the exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gustavo. Yeah, Andre. And Gustavo. Yeah. And on the other side. It is oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. Working hard, right? Working hard. Maif. Yes. No, it's chocolate, no? Era maíz, no? Sí. Maíz. Sí, sí, sí. Sí, sí. sí. We'll we see Gustavo tomorrow, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. He's coming tomorrow. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So Cuernavaca was. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think he's nobody forgets. Says. Yeah. Nobody forgets that. I remember very well and. I remember also jogging in the morning with Jaime, right? So yeah, at that time we still tried to be in good shape, right? Then, <laughs> then later we abandoned at that time. And 
Yeah, uh, it, it was a marvelous place, right? Hard, you know, marvelous far, place. yes. But hard, far to get, but very, very worth uh, visiting. I think this is the southwest. Uh, uh, southwest place. of Cuernavaca, yes. We were a little far away from the hotel. Right. Yeah. Two or yeah. three kilometers from the from center, the the center, the downtown. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah, fantastic, uh, fantastic experience. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, I remember there were some people at the time, they were very young. For instance, I think uh, people like Julio Rossi. I mean, they were pe the people that- Julio Rossi, he was there, yes. I yeah, remember. So they were almost like students at the time, right? Yeah. So then now- It was a simple he, school. Yeah. This was a simple school. A simple school, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then I remember I also at that time I I took the time of writing some lecture notes. I mean they were published by in this journal, uh, discrete and continuous dynamical systems. And I mean I'm, I mean these are efforts that are worth right because then people use them, and uh, yeah. So it was uh, overall that was an extremely successful event. Yeah, I think there was also maybe. Uh, Patricio uh, Felmer was involved in the organization, or I am mixing things, maybe? Or? I'm not sure. Yeah. No, no. Patricio no, Felmer no, was I involved don't think so. in a Chilean theme park school yeah. south of Chile in Temuco. This was in 1999. Okay, so that it was before then, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No? This was maybe a little before, yes. No, seven years before, something like that. A lot yes. of time. <laughs> In Valdivia, Carlos, no? It was Temuco. Mm -hmm. University of La Frontera. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. University of the Boundary. Oh, de la Frontera, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> University of de la Frontera, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You gave a very nice course there. Yeah, it was uh, at the time I remember it was done by a slides and, and I remember how heavy the luggage was, right? Because exactly. you know, either uh, a series of lectures, it was a few, maybe, I don't know, maybe 200 slides or so, and that was kilos, right? So it could wait uh, a few kilos. <laughs> yeah. I have here another picture. Do you see? This is Menasque. Yeah, but this is more recent, right? Or... This is quite recent, some five yeah. years ago or six right, years ago. Right. So it was not the last one, but the, the before the last one or so. Before yeah. the last one. So yeah, I think probably yeah, see the, here, I see Arms, Gunter, but, yeah, Giuseppe. Giuseppe, yeah, I see. Uh, but uh, yeah, I Arms. see John Barnes. Yeah, I see John Barnes there. I think John was maybe 97 and then 99, right? So 99. No, sorry, 2000, no, 2017, 18, 2017 and 2019, right? So maybe yes. this is probably 2017, I would say, right? Four years ago. Yeah. I feel that this this is maybe the best restaurant in Benasque, no? I mean, that's one of the, yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of those we like the most. Uh, certainly, it's, and it's in this small village, right? It's actually not, I don't know what is the name of this village. Uh, yeah, in between. Ah, it is close to Benasque, not Yeah, yeah, exactly walking. Benasque. I mean, it's a, it's kind of 40 minutes walk, or mm -hmm. I mean, it's a beautiful uh, place, right? So, yeah. And I remember we had such a great dinner there. It was, uh, yeah. Great dinner, yes. And really the wine amazing. was perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have 40 minutes walk back, which is good for the day. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming back was uh, very nice. Indeed. And uh, your smile here inspired us, our work in the souvenir, on the souvenir. Do you see? What? Uh, your smile. Ah, yeah. yeah smile yeah. in this picture. I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was happy that evening, definitely. You were extremely very happy good, and uh, very this good is company. what we wrote. Yeah. On the souvenir you will receive. I see. Okay. Very good. Thank you. So the souvenir is coming with Sebastian when? In, with Sebastian, uh, yes. 
November 20, no? Sebastian, are November, you coming? Okay. 22. Yeah. 22. 22. We'll be there. We'll be there. So I ask you Sí, felicidades. Muchas gracias, Magali. Un beso. Ollane, un beso. Ainara, un beso, ¿eh? Igualmente. Rafa, qué bien, qué bien, Fatia. Ay, qué bien. Muchas gracias a todos. Un abrazo. Gracias. Les pido si pueden encender su. Ah, cámara Magali, it was nice. Para sacar una foto. I ask you if you turn on your camera to take a picture. And oh, yeah, this puzzle global pictures. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, Rodrigo is the photographer. Yes. Um... Okay. Okay, I will take a picture now. Okay. No, hold it. Okay, it's okay. Mira, aquí yo encontré una foto, la única que tengo. ¿La muestro? Of course. ¿Dónde está? ¿Dónde está? Se me perdió. Bueno, voy a mostrar todo el desktop porque no la... Ahí está. No está muy buena, pero... Ah, eso es en Bilbao, eso es en el Hotel Ava, ¿no? Que hicimos el Warsaw ah, ese, ¿no? Sí. sí, que estaba, me acuerdo que vino, sí, veo aquí a, abajo a Magali, a César, que era nuestro gerente, Alejandro, Felipe. Eh, estaba también, vino, vino Figali a dar, veo aquí Miguel Escobedo a Corón también, que Jean-Michel y la Doné Ancourt, uh, que te, que te fantastique. Et il y avait Miguel aussi, mais il y avait Figali aussi qui est venu donner un cours. À l'époque, je ne le connaissais pas, il était tout jeune. Euh, voilà, euh, ça a été un bon investissement de, de le faire venir. Hein. Voilà. Et c'était ici à l'hôtel là-bas et, et j'ai un très bon souvenir de, de ces cours. En effet, ça a été très dynamique et très réussi et, et des, des cours de très bon niveau. Voilà. Merci. Gracias, Axel. Gracias a ti. I have here a surprise for Ainara. Is Ainara there? I'm here. Sí. You are there? Ainara, yes. ¿estás ahí? I am. I have a surprise for you. I will share your screen. <laughs> ah, <me> acuerdo, sí. <laughs> sí, sí. And this one? <laughs> sí, 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 me acuerdo. Que this is the best before. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. I think that Ainara was too small at that time. He was I a... think our Wi Fi. Oh, oh. oh my oh. god. <laughs> I remember this. I remember this day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she was, I think you, we were discussing on the Blackboard, Carlos, and then she was reproducing the, you know, the, the same thing. The Laplacian and all the... Yeah, rewriting everything she was Mathematical seeing. operators. <laughs> yeah, down, down there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time, maybe she was like four or five, right? Yeah. yeah. Four or five. It no, was maybe, it was one, maybe it was 2000, uh, yeah, uh, 12 or so. Mm. Seven, maybe, seven, maybe. Seven, maybe. I think yeah. both of us have uh, this experience of growing in the black blackboards yeah. while, yeah. while like, that was working. <laughs> I, I remember that as well. Yeah. 
Uh, Rodrigo, you have a picture also, no? Yes, I send. I will send. Give me a moment. Ah, que lo mandaste al. Sí, ahí está. Ah, esta es la foto de grupo, excelente. Muchas gracias. Ok, gracias. Gracias a todos por participar y por quedarse hasta tan tarde y, y por toda su disposición a, a realizar este congreso online, que bueno, de una u otra manera lo, lo hemos podido llevar a cabo. Nos queda el último día de sesiones, así que gracias a todos por, por participar. Gracias a vosotros por haberlo organizado también y, y, a, y como dices a todos los que pacientemente han estado ahí todavía incluso a las 8.31 que aquí ya es la hora de ahora ya es la hora de la caña ¿eh? Oye, yo me he conectado a las 6 de la mañana Enrique Ay, no. Mejor las 6 de la mañana que las Eso ¿Por qué a las 6 de la mañana? Eso, pues porque aquí son 3 horas menos que en Chile 7 horas menos que en Europa y empieza ah, es a las seis de la gap. mañana. Ah, es verdad que hay un gap todavía mayor entre, entre Chile y México, ¿no? Sí, sí, sí. Ya, Entonces, es a las siete, seis de la mañana aquí he estado. Pero, ¿Y por qué hay tanta diferencia entre México y Chile? Eso no hay una... No está armonizado todavía los horarios en Latinoamérica. No, porque es el horario de invierno en México cuando es el horario de verano en Chile y entonces ah, se hace un ah, gap vale, muy vale. grande. Eh, no sí, es una hora. No hay, no hay tanta diferencia, ¿no? no es, es, y... es el cambio de horario que van en sentido contrario en esta época del año. Porque si uno de, estando en Santiago mira al norte, cuando llega a México, ¿qué se encuentra? ¿Qué ciudad se encuentra al norte? Yo creo de... que por Mérida, por ahí, Yucatán, la península de Yucatán debe sí. ser más o menos. Sí. Muy bien, Pero muy no bien. es tanto eso, sino el horario de verano y el horario de invierno. Sí, 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 claro, es verdad. Es el, el hemisferio. Uh -huh. Efectivamente. Pues nada, muchas gracias, Lucero. Y bueno, pues ya, ahora ya... ¿eh? Ahora ya puedes ir a la oficina tranquilamente, ¿no? Exacto. Ahora puedes empezar a trabajar ya sin que te moleste nadie, ¿no? ¿Eh? Porque claro, como son, como son siete horas menos, tienes toda la tarde por delante, ¿no? Claro, ¿Eh? claro. Ya... No, ¿Qué no, crees? Ya empieza lo bueno, muy bien. Sí, bueno, sí. pues un abrazo, gracias por Bueno, felicidades, ahí. Enrique. Bueno, igual, igual. Pronto, ah. Un abrazo a todos. Felicidades. Felicidades, Carlos. Felicidades. Gracias. Felicidades, Carlos. Felicidades, Carlos. Adiós. Que estén muy bien, ¿eh? Felicidades. Hasta mañana, tempranito. Gracias, Alberto. Hasta luego. Gusto verte, Magali. Chao. Chao. Saludos, Magali. Oye, Magali. Chao. 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 Gracias. Chao, chao. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.